This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. You're joking. Well, let's get back to it. So I was going to talk about this last night, but I completely ran out of time because I was talking about the issues. A senior Conservative MP who admitted his involvement in a honey trap sexting scandal will not have the whip removed. And why would that be? Because this is all perfectly normal in Tory land. That's why. It's also because he is a victim. What? <laughs> William Ragg, chairman of the Commons Select Committee, told The Times that he handed over the personal phone numbers of colleagues to a man that he met on Grinder, a gay dating app. The vice chairman of the 1922 committee... <laughs> said that he provided the details after sending intimate pictures of himself to the user. Disgusting. Rag said that he was scared that the man had compromising things on me. He was being manipulated. And not in a good way. Those colleagues, which included, uh, but were not limited to, several MPs, members of their staff, and had a political... Those colleagues, which included several MPs, members of their staff and a political journalist, were sent unsolicited flirtatious messages from the people who are identifying themselves as either Charlie or Abby, depending. Of course, no other MP was so stupid as to send pictures of their uh, parts to complete strangers who messaged them out of the blue. Oh, no, that's right. Two MPs actually did do that. Oh, fabulous. I mean, we're not really dealing with the brightest bulbs here, are we? They justify their eye-watering pay rises and massive expenses by saying that we must pay well to get the best talents. If these are the best talents that this country can produce, can we see what the second best look like? I mean, if anything, they might be cheaper. The incident has heightened concerns over the vulnerability of MPs to cyber attacks. Actually, it's heightened concerns that were being run by dummies. Morons who are motivated by money and pleasure, who seek nothing beyond their immediate gratification. What does that remind you of? The great big greedy nincompoop. Rag will remain uh, in uh, position. He will retain the rip, the whip, <laughs> after apologising. I am very sorry that I screwed up. Totally screwed. I mean, I am so sorry. You just don't know how sorry I am. I am sorry. Yeah, nothing to see here. Please move along, or it's jail time for you, Sonny. And no, you can't you apologise your way out of that. You're not an MP, you know. And various Tories were wheeled out to read off the script that said, he has apologised fulsomely and correctly and it is the right thing to do and he has done the right thing and the Prime Minister has been very clear about that and blah, blah, blah. And by the way, William Ragg was a member of the Conservative Common Sense Group. <laughs> <laughs> Which tells us everything we need to know about the Conservative Common Sense Group. Other members include Jonathan Gullis. Need I say more? No. <laughs> oh, Lee Anderson used to be a member before he became defective. I mean, he defected. On Wednesday, Politico reported MPs had been sent late-night texts from an unknown number. The sender would explain that they had met years ago, usually in one of the parliamentary bars. The person identified themselves as either Charlie or Abby from a phone number with a profile picture featuring a man in a white T-shirt having a meal with a woman in a blue and a white dress. Charlie said he used to work in Parliament and bragged about having sex with several Conservative and Labour MPs. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure bragged is the right word here. Admitted would be closer to the mark. Confessed would be more pro appropriate. Soon into the conversation, men targeted by Charlie were sent an explicit picture and asked to reciprocate. And two of them said, yeah, OK, sure, why not? Have you ever seen anything that looks like this before? <coughs> Sir Lindsley Hoyle, the common speaker, said, morons. I'm surrounded by morons. He didn't say that. I made that up. I'll tell you what he really said if you give me your number. Just send me a pic and I'll get right back to you. <sighs> Texts and tweets and such from last night, most of which I read uh, yesterday. I did very well. I'm getting better at this, yes? No. Liz texts, what do you think Charles would do for a living if we hadn't given him a billion pounds? 
Let's face it, having been born into that dreadful, toxic, dysfunctional family that no one in their right mind would want to get for next-door neighbours, he'd probably not get very far. Flogging counterfeit perfume out of a gym bag at the local bookies, I reckon, says Liz. <laughs> no, I think he'd be a gardener. Uh, but a not, very, not a very good one. He'd spend his time talking to the vegetables. Stop talking to them, man, and dig them up. <laughs> Mickey texts... NASA wants time on the moon, but you have to read between the lines, so when you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. Have no idea what you're talking about, Mickey, but you're so fine, you're so fine, you blow my mind. Hey, Mickey. Rory texts, we may only be a few months away from Rishi making the long climb up the steps to his podium. <laughs> <laughs> to, to his, to the long climb up the steps to his podium outside number 10 conceding the election and heading to the palace well which palace his palace or the palace yeah he'll go to the palace and then he'll go to one of his own palaces I bet he can't wait just monetize the position as much as you can, and then uh, he'll be uh, on a jet plane to Southern California. Toot sweet, if not sooner. Going through the VIP lounge at Heathrow, I bet. Didn't want to, uh, you know, mix with the pros. First class ain't first class enough for him. I bet we pay for that. I bet we end up paying for his flight out of here. Oh, when will it ever end? Tony Tex, I agree with you. I, too, am worried about Labour getting in because Tory have bleeped this country up so much Labour will not be able to turn it back and Tory get back in says Tony <laughs> how would you sum that up I love the poorly educated yeah just try reading it before you send it Tony crying out loud let's have um, Winchester hello Simon Next, good evening yes sir right um this is a follow-on call from you, from, from something you said last night. Oh, yeah. Just, you set off my imagination, and I've literally been waiting by the phone all day to get to speak to you about it. Right. The roads. Yeah. And you said about the, 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 the paint um, yeah. eating away at the roads. Yes. Am like um, I the only person who's ever said this out loud? Does the paint that they delineate the lines in the road actually eat the road? Not, I don't know about that. But what I was thinking was, you know when a road is resurfaced, right? Mm. And they put the little sign up, so you can't do any more than 10 mile an hour, and they've got the little sign that says, you know, chips in the road. Oh, the, yeah. Um, yeah, not those ones around you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and so presumably the council are using the motorists to flatten the chips, the, the chips of stone, into the road, right? No. No? No, they can't be. I mean, it needs to be flat smooth. Tyres aren't going to do that. You need a roller. Well, the thing is, you never see that. You see the road with the chips on it. Yeah. You see the dust everywhere. Uh -huh. If you're following the car, the car in front of you generally flicks one or two at your windscreen. Yeah. But as time goes on, it gets smoother. But here's the thing. Each side of the lane, you would you would assume, is getting smoother because it's being driven over. Mm. So what is flattening the middle of the lane? Why is there not a raised mound of chips? Right. And this is what you waited all day to tell me. Well, I would prefer to find James O'Brien for Mystery Hour, but <laughs> I can't be able to wait for that, so I thought I would introduce a new feature into your show. Right. So this is Nicky Abbott's Mystery Hour. Yeah, we'll call it... Uh, we'll call it... Um... With Nick Abbott. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'd like a board game, and I'd like everything else. All the trappings. OK, watch for it at your door. It'll be with you too sweet. Thanks a lot, Simon. No, I think that the paint that they use to mark down the middle of the road actually eats the middle of the road. Because uh, unless I am hallucinating, which is uh, not recommended when you're driving, it's, um, it, the, the paint seems to be the, th the, uh, the area of the road that gets the most uh, potholes. Yes? Hello? Is this thing on? This uh, text says, William Ragg should have the whip removed before photographs emerge of it being <laughs> used on him. <laughs> used on him, says Simon. 
Evening, Nick, says RJ. You said that chap won't have the whip removed. Won't that be a... Um, OK, so there's a lot of whip jokes. Jerry in Denmark says, with our democratic first past the post system, trying to find intelligent people to run this country is about as successful as nailing jelly to the wall. Which is presumably one of those Danish jokes. He says, can you stop reading this and get on with your job? <laughs> That's the message from Tristan. Can you stop reading this and get on with your job? Well, let me think about that. No, 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 no. OK, then. All right, then. So, should we talk about the uh, next election? Assuming that we're going to have one and it's not going to be cancelled for our safety. <laughs> Labour is heading for a 154-seat majority with a vote share almost identical... Get this, a vote share almost identical to Jeremy Corbyn's in 2017. Now, you recall that Jeremy Corbyn lost... And with the same number of votes, Labour is going to is likely to get a 154 seat majority this time around. How bizarre! Uh, the Labour Party picking up swing supporters, not swingers, swing supporters, while the Tories collapse in constituencies that they are defending. This is an analysis of a seat by seat YouGov poll, which put Labour on course for 403 MPs and finds that Keir Starmer is actually losing votes in some of the party's safest seats. But it don't make no never mind, because they're going to win them anyway. What a system of government. Doesn't matter because uh, our screwed up voting system could uh, mean that Starmer could get the exact same number of votes as Jezza, but unlike Uncle Jezza, Starmer would win. Big. Huge. The poll finds that Labour's vote is down on 2019 in more than 50 constituencies, predominantly urban seats, where supporters have been disillusioned by Starmer's move to the centre. Well, that's the, uh, that's the theory. I don't know about that. But I think they probably just don't know him very well. He's a bit... Um, he's not like uh, Jezu. He's not you know, all beardy and in your face and, uh, you know, cuddly and warm. He's a bit aloof. I think that's it, isn't it? I mean, people don't... Uh, really pay much attention to the manifesto. They're not really uh, concerned about the issues. They go, we're all about feelings now, baby. Oh. And people just don't feel uh, very positively towards him. They don't think that he's a bad person. They just don't, th he's not very warm, that's all. Whereas uh, this bloke did uh, warm in industrial quantities. Yeah, 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 wait, 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 wait. Yeah, we know how that turned out. Badly. The poll finds that Labour's vote is down on 2019 in more than 50 constituencies. Uh, but it does not prevent Labour from retaining all of these seats, many of which were won by large majorities under, under Uncle Jezza. Overall, Labour's vote share is up by only three percentage points in seats it already holds, compared with more than eight points in seats held by the Conservatives. Did you understand that? No. Shall I read it? Shall I, shall I read it again? No. Overall, Labour's vote share is up only three percentage points in seats it already holds, compared with more than eight points in seats held by the Conservatives. So, in essence, the Labour Party seems to be winning all the right votes. They don't have to do very well in the seats they already hold if they held if they uh, hold them by a big margin because they're going to win them anyway. What they have to do is get votes in places that they don't uh, own at the moment, votes-wise. So Labour, the theory goes, is winning votes in all the right places, in a first-past-the-post system. In seats held by the SNPists, Labour's vote share is up 15 points. It's probably going to be Scotland's largest party again. And the size of uh, Labour's predicted majority is aided by a collapse in Conservative support. Tories are down 26 points in seats that they're defending against Labour. Wow. 26 points. <laughs> 26 points down the Tories in their own seats. And why would that be? I mean, what about the plan? Rishi Sunak has been very clear that the plan is working. We have a plan. Plan, plan, plan and plan, plan and plan, plan. Or you just go back to square one. That yeah, let's, let's go back to square one. Can we do that straight away? 
Reform, when it was known as the Brexit Party, didn't stand in the Tory-held seats in 2019, but this time it plans to fight everywhere. And boy, do they have the talent to fight them. <laughs> the, uh, the party founded by Nigel Farage is up 14 points in seats the Tories are defending against Labour, but only six points in the ones that Labour is defending against the Tories. So for, uh, for uh, Farage's um, uh, gang is doing well in Tory-held seats, but not that well in Labour-held seats. We've got a few idiots in our party. Yeah, no doubt. And I cannot believe I am about to say this, but we appreciate your efforts, Nigel Farage. Thank you! Making it more difficult for the Conservatives to win the next election. Pulling a, a left um, a trick there. Right wing now fighting amongst themselves and wrestling each other to the ground, uh, m m making it more possible that the Labour Party will step nimbly over them and take the tape. Um, and it was, uh, it, it all started with um, like this sort of dissatisfaction with the Conservative Party started with Partygate. You remember Partygate? I followed the ministerial guidance at all times. Mm -hmm. I followed the ministerial guidance at all times. Yes. I followed the ministerial guidance at all times. Yes. I followed the ministerial guidance at all times. He didn't follow the ministerial gu guidance at all, ever. And then there was the Lisbot. Absolutely. Absolutely. And from uh, that, those, those two uh, incidents, uh, we uh, find ourselves where we are today. And Labour is now on course to win a handful of symbolic constituencies because the Conservative vote is down more than twice as much as Starmer's vote has risen. So the Tories are losing it more than the Labour Party are winning it. In the red wall seat of Great Grimsby, for instance, which the Tories won in 2019, Labour's vote is up by 14 points and the Tory vote has fallen by 32. Wow. Wow. Hey, Redwall, how's that Brexit uh, you wanted so much uh, working out for you? Oh, fabulous. Is it everything you were warned it would be? Oh, I've got to take a break because I'm past it already. But I have the detailed files, don't you worry about that. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Oh, hello. So, back to what I was saying. The uh, Red Wall. In a place called Great Grimsby. What's so great about Grimsby, by the way? In a place called Great Grimsby, which the Conservatives won in 2019, Labour's vote is up by 14 points and the Tory vote has fallen by 32. Blimey. And in 2019, Labour won only 32% of the national vote. This week's poll suggests that the party is up to 41%. Hey, you know what? It's about blooming time that the Labour Party ran this country with 100% of the power with less than 50% of the vote, because that's the Tories' thing. This week's poll shows that the Labour Party are on 41%, only fractionally ahead of the 40% won by Uncle Jezza in 2017, when he denied Theresa May a majority but won only 262 seats. Ain't that bizarre? Almost the exact same number of votes, 41% this time around for Skier, and 40% uh, last time for Jezza. But the result is just dramatically different. He's going to win almost twice as many seats as Skier, with the, the exact same number of votes. And this shift is because Labour support is becoming what they call more efficient, gaining voters in parts of the country where it most directly translates to seats, and losing votes where it doesn't really matter at all, because they're going to win them anyway. Corbyn's party piled up huge majorities in existing Labour seats, but made relatively small inroads into Tory territory. And uh, Tony Blair's third general election victory in 2005 was won with just 35% of the votes, but it was an excellent distribution of votes around the country, which meant they picked up 355 seats, enough for a comfortable majority. What a weird way to run your affairs. And according to this poll, Labour's predicted to win 403 seats at the general election with 41% of the vote. It's about the same as Blair achieved in his hat-trick of victories. And almost as many seats as Blair's uh, majorities in 1997 and 2001. But, you know, it all depends on people actually voting. You know, leaving the squalor of your front room for 10 minutes to trundle down to the voting booth and registering your choice. And that means remembering to take your voter ID card. And your polling card, I mean, I've got one the other day. 
And it lists on the back all of the things that they accept as um, a voter ID. <clears throat> And they're all for old people. There's a passport, that'll do, but um, m more old people have a passport than younger people. There's a driving license, ditto, a biometric immigration document. I don't really know what that is, but I would imagine that older people would have one of those. There's an identity card bearing proof of age standards scheme hologram. I don't have no idea what that is. A Ministry of Defence card, older people. A blue badge, older people. A national identity card issued by an EEA state. Europe. <laughs> an older person's bus pass. A disabled person's bus pass. An Oyster 60-plus-year-old card. A freedom pass. All of those are for old people. A Scottish national entitlement card. A 60-and-over Welsh concessionary travel card. A disabled person's Welsh concessionary travel card, a senior smart pass issued in Northern Ireland, a registered blind smart pass, a war disablement smart pass, a 60 plus year old smart pass, all old people, a half fair smart pass issued in Northern Ireland, an electoral identity card issued in Northern Ireland, and a voter authority certificate or temporary voter authority certificate. Almost all for old people. Why? because that's the only demographic left that is likely to vote Conservative. Talk about uh, underhand methods. It's all so... What would Donald Trump do? Oh, shut up! Yeah, he would uh, do the, uh, the least reasonable thing in any given uh, situation. He would do the least proper thing in any given situation. Everything that I've done is 100% proper. That's what I do is I do things proper. He lied. So... Don't forget your voter ID card, kids, because that's what the government wants you to do. Wake up, sheeple. It's later than you think. And that will take time, of course. It'll take time to get one of those voter ID cards, regardless of what they are. So do it now. Do it straight away, as in immediately. Let's see now. Uh, Sheffield. Hello, Steve. Good evening. Yes, Steve. Yeah, just uh, regarding your points about the uh, roads oh, yes. uh, and the, the white lines. Uh, yeah, it's it's not the white lines which are eating the uh, the road surfaces. Uh, and you say that you you, uh, you say that as though you are confident. Yeah, I'm, uh, well, uh, I've been in the ind asphalt industry most of my working life. I'm a member of the Institute of Asphalt Technology. <laughs> is that is that a real thing? The Institute <laughs> for Asphalt Technology. Yes. Is there much technology in asphalt? Surprisingly so, yes. Yes. Um, and your your previous caller talking about the cars compacting the chippings yeah. into the road. Yeah, that, that is actually part of it. When you do surface dressing, there's a light compaction. Uh, but, yeah, it does rely on vehicles passing to... Uh, to provide most of the compaction into those uh, those surfaces. Well, I find that hard to believe. I mean, I'm not uh, questioning your expertise in this matter, but I find that hard to believe because cars tend to drive more or less the same route. The tyres hit the same space on the road, car after car after car. What about the middle part? There is a there is a light compact when there is a light compaction put in uh, when it has, is first done, but when. Those, that kind of resurfacing work does continue. You do see the uh, the wheel tracks who are a lot more compacted than the rest of it. But uh, yeah, it, it is it is part of the uh, the procedure. But if cars are in pack, are, are packing down the road, then uh, where, how does how does the road get that sort of that curve on it that makes the rain fall off? You think you'd be creating two? to like lanes in the road yeah, for the water to yeah, collect in that's a camber of the road and that's done right down in the bottom layers that's a full that's full part of the construction so the entire road construction when they're building up all the different layers below it is all shaping the, the camber of the road the surface dressing uh, where the tires compact is only a small part of road construction it's only a, a sort of a short-term repair which is only designed to last one or two years so why then do i keep seeing the area that has been painted down the middle of a road 
is, is the bit that's got all the holes in it. Because I would imagine that on a two two lane road, what, what, one going in e- one lane going in each direction, that the actual middle part where the line is painted down the middle of the road gets the least amount of um, tires on it, because people tend to sit in the middle of the lane, so they don't actually stray over to where the line is down the middle of the road, and yet that's where all the holes are. No, you're right. But when when a, a road is laid, each individual lane is laid by the paving machine on its own. So what you get in the middle, where the white lines are, is where the joints of the two oh, lanes being laid. Right. So uh, the joints are where water can ingress. Um, they can be sealed, but it doesn't happen very often because of the cost of adding a seal between the two lanes. That so makes it's where sense. Water gets into the road uh, at the joint, and that's where the potholes form. Water ingress. Yes, yes. I, I totally get that now. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate it. There you are. You see, an expert. Every now and again, this show's educational. No. No. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. He is a very sick and dangerous man. Speaking of which, uh, around texts, Nick Abbott is radio velvet, not blue velvet. She wore blue velvet. Hello, Frank. It's Daddy Bleephead, and where's my bourbon? Can't you remember anything? I could sit here all night long. Be polite! <laughs> uh, Ahmed emails. I get so... An- I got, got, not get, got so angry when Braverman popped up again in the news yesterday, I started spitting chips. <laughs> My new favourite phrase. Martin says, they had to cancel the Glasgow open-top bus tours today. These, of the, of these, peop- <laughs> these people never heard of umbrellas. There's no such thing as a Glasgow open-top bus tour. There just can't be. Tessa says, Jonathan Gullis is a worthy member of the Tory Common Sense Group. He has just referred to, quotes, the rabbit in the room in an interview <laughs> after which he can be heard berating himself for getting the wrong animal. Says it all. No, says Tessa. Yeah, the rabbit in the room and he uh, pulled the elephant out of the hat or something like that. Uh, yeah, w- one of those tripeds. <laughs> 0345 Let's see now. Uh, Chingford. Hello, John. Oh, hi, Nick. Actually, where, where's Sam tonight? Who? Sam, your glamour assistant. Oh. The um, very knowledgeable glamour assistant. Yes. What? What's it got to do with you? Why, you want to send well, him... I, you I, want, I, do you want to send him a picture? Well, no, I, I just... <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, do, I just liked his interjections. Um, I, is he coming back or? Um, let's move on, John. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed uh, Jonathan's um, uh, contribution last night. Uh, Who was that? Was on jo- Jonathan from Harrow. Oh, right. No, I, I thought he was on spiffing form. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, well, I, I just can't go into my digital radio because what I didn't realise is the old, I mean, my old digital radio is about 20 years old and there's loads of stations now I can get that I didn't get on the old one. Yeah. I just got this new one. I, I didn't realise that. Um, but somebody on Boom Radio said it, so um, that's that. I actually well, let, let me three... ask you a question about this, John. Yeah. What on earth did you call about? Are we going to get to that eventually, if not sooner? Well, I, I'd, I'd said sort of um, streaming versus uh, physical media. I mean, I know it's a bit off kilter, but I didn't. I'm a bit bored with politics at the moment. So. Oh, really? Okay. Well, I'll I'll take that on board, uh, John. I'll put forward a, a series of uh, subjects that I might uh, think about talking about later and um, get your approval or not, as the case may be. Good grief, <laughs> Rob says. Hi, Nick. I'm a bit of a fan. A bit. Which bit? A bit of a fan of your radio progs and just Googled you to see what you look like. I found half a dozen images and they're all sixth form school <laughs> school pics. <laughs> uh, any chance of posting some updates? Well, let me think about that. No, 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 no. Lee says, I was thinking, would we ever reach the stage that pictures of genitalia could be used as, as a form of <laughs> photo ID? <laughs> um, 
No. But then again, it's widely open to scammers and fraud. There's lots of victims out there already, says Lee, who's really been thinking about this way too much. Shirley says, Nick, most young people have a passport as they need it to buy drinks in Weatherspoons. Do they? <laughs> no, they don't. They don't, do they? And uh, David says, my council seems to be spending a fortune on the new Cycle Ian. That's what it says. The new Cycle Ian. Unless that I is an L, and in which case the council is spending a fortune on a new Cycle Lan. I'm not sure it makes more sense. It uh, sounds to me like they're throwing their money away. Somebody should just stage an intervention. 0345 Hartlepool. Hello, Graham. Hello there, Nick. Hello there, Graham. It's great to hear you, and I thoroughly enjoy your programme. Well, I appreciate oh, it. Thank you. Yes, but? Well, you do annoy me. Uh-oh. With your statement that pensioners vote Tory. Yes. I'm 72 years of age. Mm -hmm. 72 years old. Yeah. Yeah, and I've never voted Tory in my life. I can't stand the buggers. Are you sure? Oh, yes. (laughs) I've been a labourer all my life. Mm -hmm. Uh, I started off when I was younger in the Liberals with Peter Bessel and Paul Tyler. But that's before your time. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> but um, I don't have a passport. I've been to different countries in the world. How have you managed uh, that, then? Well, I had a military ID and a rifle. <laughs> yeah, a rifle is the uh, is accepted everywhere. Yeah. Just yes. <laughs> <laughs> they'll let you straight in. <laughs> um the best laugh was when we were at Bryce Norton going to Cyprus, they asked us a stupid question. Have you got any weapons and ammunition? Uh, what the hell do you think we're carrying? <laughs> Who asked you that? <laughs> the Army Customs. The Army Customs? You. Yeah, they're our own lads. We have our own Customs right. service. And, um, and they asked you if you had any bullets. Weapons or ammunition. Right. Yeah. What the hell do you think <laughs> I'm going there for? <laughs> Bloody holiday. Did they, did they think that you perhaps were taking your own personal weaponry with you um, over and above what you had been issued? Well, <laughs> I'm not saying anything about that. Because, right, it's uh, a secret. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, things do happen. Hush, hush. But, yeah. um, on the down low. Anyway, it's great to hear you. I listen to you every night. And if you go on some of the motorways, yeah. you will find wagon tracks in the tarmac. Wagon tracks? Because Yeah, because they've been... Tra- the, the lorries go on that lane so often, so much, that it compresses the tarmac. So that's that's something that you can uh, notice when you're going along the motorway. They dig channels into the uh, asphalt. Yes. Right. Well, I did I don't not know, know that. It is asphalt these days. Well, Dan, Rand, uh, yeah. Rand uh, the M25, they actually just use big slabs of concrete with, with about an inch yeah. gap in between the slabs, and the noise that the car makes when it goes over them is just unbelievable. It shakes your car to pieces. It's the worst road surface I have ever driven on, and it's on the M Blumin 25, Graham. Can you believe that? Well, you know why that is? Why? It's to keep the motorist awake. <laughs> No, it's not. <laughs> Keep them awake. Yep. Being stop uh, be, you falling asleep. Well, what stops me falling asleep is somebody in an Audi who's driving so close behind me that I, I feel <laughs> their hot breath on the back of my neck is what keeps me awake. Mm. All right, well, thanks a lot, Graham. I appreciate yeah. it. And uh, don't ever vote yeah. Conservative again. Promise me you won't do that. I never do. Never, I never did. Do. Right, never did. OK, good work. Yeah. Thanks a lot, mate. Got to go. 0345. 
Uh, this says, I uh, read that an iceberg twice the size of London has broken from Antarctica and is slowly making its way north. What are the chances of the Camp Cyberman still being in office by the time that <laughs> the Camp C- Cyberman... <laughs> what, you mean the man who's in charge of... This government. That guy. <laughs> he is a bit um, C-3PO, isn't he? Why doesn't anyone listen to me? That guy. Um, anyway, what's the chance of him still being in office by the time the thing melts? Do you think uh, I could place a bet on it, says Alex? You can do anything you blooming well want, Alex. It's, it's a, it used to be a free country. Brenda emails, fed up with MPs spending their time sending pictures of themselves on WhatsApp or looking up... <laughs> looking up... Looking up tractors. Disgusting. <laughs> Brenda says, we're paying the wages for this sleazy shower. About time their salaries were cut due to poor... 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 Poor performance. We Willie Rag keeps his job for now. I want a refund for every misdemeanor Tories have inflicted upon us. We get enough money back to fund every public service going. Yes. Keep thinking, Brenda. And uh, this anonymous text says, you can find out more about the Common Sense Group at the following links. Sense, S-C-E-N-T-S. Links, L-Y-N-X. A listener with material that needs to be read, not read out. (sighs) Leading Britain's conversation, Nick Abbott. Alexa, send a comment to LBC. Right, so what are we doing? Given we're doing a radio show, but if you have an hour a week or maybe two hours and you wish to be amused, then I, I can recommend the podcast that I do with Carol McGiffin. Oh, right, yeah. It is a right laugh. I think it's um, it will uh, jolly up your life. The idea is that we solve people's problems. Now, if you have a dilemma that you want us to have a bash at, then this is the address to send it to. Nick and Carol at global.com. N-I-C-K-A-N-D-C-A-R-O-L at global.com and prepare for total satisfaction. Yeah. (laughs) Ask for it by name on an internet near you. What's your problem with Nick and Carol? There's well over 200 episodes and it comes out twice a week on um, a Monday and a Friday. I think you'll love it. What's your problem with Nick and Carol? Oh, right, yeah. Uh, let's have, um, let me see now, Maidstone. Hello, Joan. Hello there. <laughs> Hello, Hello there. there. <laughs> yeah. Listen, as regards the sex thing that's going on, yeah. it isn't funny. Kick those out because we can't trust them and they're uh, a security risk. Yeah. They're definitely a security risk. You'd think Anything, so. Dolly, it's no good them standing up and saying, oh, I'm so sorry, all this <laughs> sort of stuff. Yeah. After they've named their friend, you know, pass it on. They're Amazing. like a ball ring. <laughs> you know, they, they really are. They really are. Uh, you I, can't, I, don't, I don't think we'd be able to kick them all out because there's just too many of them. Yeah, well, kick them out. I remember when I um, was on a train many, many years ago. Yeah. A chap in the same carriage exposed him, fully exposed himself oh. to me. Now, I was a grandmother. I've never dressed in a sort of, um, how shall I say, short skirt or anything like that. Yeah. And I said in a very loud voice, put that thing away. <laughs> nobody, you know, nobody came to my rescue. Huh. When he still carried on. I said to him, very loud voice, stop playing with that thing. Oh. Nobody came to my rescue. I got up, I walked down the carriage one by one. He he followed me. Oh. And I became, you know, very, very nervous. Yeah. And I got to, towards Mason, my stop. No ticket collector. Note that, please, you know, with the train thing. Right. No ticket collector. Mm. I, I thought I could be murdered or whatever as soon as I got to my stop. He was a nutcase. Yeah. And when I got off, luckily, a couple of people I knew just happened to be there. But, you know, 
people think this sort of thing is funny or sleazy or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. These people are, you know, a dangerous to society. You know, uh, the MPs. I, I remember um, a few years ago, there was this fellow doing the porn while he was sitting there in the House of Commons. Oh, mm -hmm. And according to one of tomorrow's newspapers, this has been going on for three years. Uh, oh, yes. Um, right. Well, leave it with me, Joan. And um... You don't say you're not sticking up for him. No. Are you <laughs> does, one of those? Does it sound like I'm sticking up for him? Not really. Because people no. are feeling sorry for him. No, I'm not sure that that's true. Um, yeah, that's not quite He's accurate. He's been presented as a victim. Well, yeah, I'm not sure that He's that's... not a victim. Yeah, I'm not we sure are that... the victim. All right, OK. All right, leave it with me, Joan. Thanks a lot. Cheers, my dear. 0345 I've said this many times on the air. I went to the Houses of Parliament twice. Once was just recently... Um, when I was um, invited there by somebody who used to work on this super show. And I, I only went, full disclosure, I only went because I wanted um, a, a discounted meal in one of their fancier restaurants. I thought, well, why should they be the only ones that suck up all that free food? I want that too. But, um, unfortunately, all of the restaurants were booked. So I didn't get it. I, I just saw um, yeah, Prime Minister's questions from a, a weird vantage point where I could only see half of the house, so I could only see uh, Titchy suit size um, and uh, not anybody in the Labour side, which made it just it didn't really make sense as a spectacle. Much better to watch it on TV. But the time before, it was many, many years ago now, and it was in the evening, and... Uh, um, the, the, the security was pretty much non-existent. You could just sort of wander around the place. And I was wandering around um, looking for the loo. And I've never seen so much drunkenness in my life, including when I was at university, including a freshers' week. You know, kids just fresh out of um, mummy and daddy's home, let loose on the world, and um, being able to uh, indulge themselves with the booze for the very first time. Even then... I've never seen so much drunkenness in my life. And I've said multiple times on this programme that it looked to me like a gay knocking shop. All of these old geezers bouncing off the walls they were so drunk, being held up by a suspiciously large number of almost identical floppy-haired youths. I thought it's just something particularly weird going on here. I've never seen anything like this in my life. And come to find out, I wasn't too far off. Hey, 0345 6060 973. On the subject of a previous caller, Chris texts, uh, how much night nurse has your last caller had? <laughs> Not the last caller. There are ones before, uh, one of the ones before that. Uh, Neil says, Nick, as a member of the Ashfelt Repair Safety Executive... <laughs> Asphalt Repair Safety Executive, I won't give you the acronym, we ensure that all holes are... No, OK. Another listener with material. Oh, no. I think people need to um, jump through a higher hoop to get to me. Just a little bit higher, that's all. That's all I'm asking for. Bodmin. Hello, Malcolm. Oh, hello, Nick. Malcolm. Uh I'm through the hoop, mate, I think. Yes. A couple of things. couple of things. I spent the afternoon looking for um, a good luck, um, a good news story on the Tories. Oh, yeah. And uh, really bad news. I haven't found any, Nick. But my second point is uh, the asphalt thing, at the, the roads. Hmm. Your, your, your theory about the white lines is, it's, it's not a million miles away about the white lines causing it. They're not causing it. But they're, in a sense, covering it up somewhat because, as your expert did say, um, roads are laid in in two masses, if you like, or bodies right. of tarmac. Two sides. And the joint, yeah. uh, and the joint is literally um, in the middle of the road, which is therefore under the white line. Right. But what's happening is you, they they do the one side of the road, mm. and the other side is left so that they can keep up the flow of traffic. Then they'll switch it and they do the other side, yeah. uh, and then you've got two new surfaces. But the problem is, after the join, 
And, and, and funny enough, um, I drove over an example of how it should be done earlier this afternoon because I was thinking about last night. I messaged you this last night. And uh, at the joint where you've got the new stuff being laid, the tarmac is hot. It's 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 it's, it's almost fluid, yeah, because the the black tar yeah. is molten. Mm, and it, it smells it, it, great, it smells, yeah. by the way. Whoa, yeah. the smell yeah. of it. Love it. Well, the problem is you 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 don't get the two um, sides or surfaces of, of of their bonding at the joint because when they meet up, one is cold, the other one is hot. Yeah. But what they should be doing is they should be putting a strip of molten tarmac, which is is what they do when they do repairs, patches, or yeah. when mm-hmm. they fill potholes. That makes sense. They put yes. molten molten bitumen around the edge, then they put the tarmac in, and that then, that hot stuff, the molten stuff, um, melts the tarmac right, in. Right, I get it. Yeah. Stuff okay. mm-hmm. yeah, so that's that. That's that. Uh, yeah, so, the, and, and the other thing you get, Nick, is um, with weathering, you get um, a thing called frost teeth, and uh, all of this I know because I used to work in the building industry, but you get frost teeth where water gets in. And then the it freezes and, and it expands, it and then it, expands. But, um, yeah, I, got, I, I understand yeah. I understand that part, yeah. I just didn't get the part yeah. about the uh, the paint thing, but that makes perfect sense because that's where the road joins, and then they, uh, then they cover the join with the paint, so it makes it look like the paint is ruining the road, but that's not true. No, it's 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 that the join is is breaking up. Right, that's it. All right, mate. That's all I got to say. Okay, to you. well, it sounds like you said it. Excellent work. Thanks a lot, Malcolm. I don't require any further explanation. I'm um, I, I've been uh, receiving explanations. I've got explanations up to my eyeballs. Jules says, unable to get a DAB signal in Cambridgeshire. Anyone else having the same issue? <laughs> I find that um, I listen to uh, some excellent podcasts on a global player when I drive into work. And I find that in the exact same spot, just as you approach Vauxhall, it cuts out for about 200 yards. There's a road, there's a stretch of road that it just immediately cuts out and then rejoins 200 yards down the road, which I find very suspicious. Because that's where, um, I mean, I'm not driving by MI5 or MI6 or whatever that building is. That's what I'm headed towards. Because that's in in, uh, Vauxhall, that big uh, building that blew up on the James Bond movie, Skyfall. Um, So why is that then? Can anybody explain that to me, I double dare you? Robert says, uh, as a kid on April April Fool's Day, I'd look out for the made-up news story in the papers. Now, now I can't tell which uh, story is a joke. Well, that's that is true. Yeah, I didn't bother this year uh, to uh, look up the April Fool's Day uh, stories because they're all so I don't know. They're just so lame. I think they've just been done to death, haven't they? The best, the, the best one of all time was the spaghetti tree story, but that was at a time. <laughs> That was at a time when people in this country didn't really know anything about food. And so we fell for it, or at least I did. The spaghetti tree. Since then, it's been uh, downhill all the way. 0345 6060 973. The stuff I want to talk about, I want to talk about the Tory advert and the Labour Party advert response and the uh, death of uh, everything on this planet. Global thermonuclear war. He's a great guy. He's a good guy. He's a good person. David texts, Trump is now referring to those convicted and jailed following the January... De- J- What's wrong with me? Uh, following the January the 6th insurrection as January the 6th hostages. Wow. Is he really? <laughs> uh, he's not a very honest person. I'm a person that wants to tell the truth. I'm an honest person. Yes, he lied. At a recent rally, Trump said that some of them are good people. Some of them are good people. Some of them are rapists and murderers. And some of them are good people, I suppose. It's a line he's used before, says David, but uh, not referring referring to Caucasians wearing white hoods. (laughs) Andy emails, last time I was in Tenerife, I was appalled by the sordid behaviour of the Club 68 to 80 holidaymakers. I never saw anyone under 25 there, probably on Xbox or something. Yeah, because real life is like, oh, it's so boring. (laughs) 
Hey, hey kids, wake up. There's an entire world out there. Just drag your eyes off your phones for 10 seconds. You'll find it's in a high def and surround sound, baby. Just try it, you might like it. 0345 6060 Mitchum, Leroy. Yes, Nick. Leroy. Yeah. Oh, the MP, Tobias Selwood, was making the rounds for young people to join up for conscription for the British military. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, you know, he just said something about young people get off their phone. Mm-hmm. Do you think they're going to get off their phone to join the British military? No. I think if there's a suggestion that a political party is going to require them to do that, then that will make them go out and vote. Yeah, but uh, why would they join? What? Who's going to invade us, Nick? Nick? What resources have we got? We haven't got anything anymore. We sold it all. They're going to have to go and invade Russia to um, get all of our stuff back. Yeah, Maggie Thatcher sold it all off. All uh, of it. Everything, the water, the gas, the electricity. Leroy, if they could have sold the air, they'd have done it by now. Yeah, but, you know, we had a conversation before, and what have we? What natural resources have we got? What's flowing in the river? We ain't got nothing. Well, we've got, yeah. uh, we got sewage. We've got a lot, a lot of sewage. Uh, can I uh, interest yeah. an invading army in a, a vast resource yeah. of sewage? <laughs> yeah, but we've got the flag. We've got the Union Jack. Oh, I don't know, though, uh, Leroy. Some, yeah, uh, so l- what you've got to do... The lefty uh, woke karate uh, have been messing with the, the flag. Okie dokie. So what they've got to do is uh, have the sewage there in the British Channel surrounded by the Union Jack, and that's it. Well, it sounds like you've been giving it a lot of thought, Leroy. Can you um, do, do me a diagram, pop it in a post? <laughs> Thanks for that. 0345-6060-973. David emails, Road Tarmac is Ashfelt, pronounced Asphalt, not Ashfelt. Is it? I do know how you love uh, to debate the pronunciation of H. You needn't worry with Ashfelt because it ain't in there. It is. It's right after the P. Asphalt? <laughs> no, it's not. Is it? I thought it was Ashfelt. It's Asphalt. Well, that's just ridiculous. I don't want to drive on that. Joe on a boat emails, I've seen numerous reports today that the Conservatives are planning to oust Titchy after their predictably calamitous local elections. Word has it that uh, Pretty Patel is going to be the new favourite to lead the Tories uh, with, uh, or uh, with the Liz Blundertrust as the Chancellor. Absolutely. The world's gone crazy, says Joe. No, not the world, Joe. A small part of it, no doubt. 0345 Well, in um, addition to what I was talking about before the break, the uh, Conservatives are having a bad time in every demographic that you could uh, think of, including um, old people. So I got that wrong earlier on. Support for the Conservative Party in crucial blue wall seats has fallen to a new low. It's that Rishi Sunak magic. He's got the touch. This government... Yeah, is going down. A poll conducted uh, at the end of last month found that 26% of people intended to vote for the Tories, down two points when compared to the previous survey conducted on March the 3rd. They were at an all-time low. And they said, well, we can't go any further uh, down than this. Not in our own backyard, not in the blue wall. And Titchy said, hold my decaf oat milk latte. The pollster said 26% was the lowest figure it had ever recorded for the Tories in the blue wall since it started its tracking poll in October 2022. The latest survey gives Labour an eight-point lead over the Tories in their own backyard, the blue wall, with the uh, Labour Party on 34. An eight-point lead. And the blue wall is dozens of well-off constituencies in the south of England where the Tories have traditionally won. Even rich people can't stand them anymore. The tracker poll covers 42 seats. The Conservatives won all of them. 
at the 2019 general election, securing just under 50% of the vote. Just think about that. The Tories, in a huge landslide, could not even get half of the vote in the places in which they were most popular. It's not much of a democracy, is it? No. And now they're going to get wiped out in the places where, up to now, the plan was working. We have a plan. Yeah, sure you do. He has uh, The plan is just say the word plan a lot. Plan, 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 plan and plan. And the plan is working. Whatever you're doing now, Prime Minister, just keep doing it. The plan is working. And these are the results so far. The blue wall. This is where they would expect the win. Labour are on 34 and the Tories are on 26. And um, the Greenies are uh, on uh, 6%. Groovy. The Groovy Greenies. They're not doing that well. I, th- I think they should be doing uh, better than that. So that's the blue wall, and they're uh, losing that. And a new uh, YouGov poll for The Times showed that among C2DE social classes, reform is narrowly ahead of the Tories on 22, uh, and reformer on 23. Uh, what seems to be... Uh, this is a, within the margin of error. You know, it's just one point between them. But even so, I mean, it seems to be an error that a fifth of the poorest people in the land are so delighted with how everything is going that they want five more years of a Conservative government. Wake up, sheeple. It's later than you think. It's almost a quarter. The survey also found that reform is ahead of the Tories Tories in the north of England by 21 to 18, while the two parties are neck and neck in the Midlands on 21%. And, and they are, in effect, tied among voters aged 50 to 64. Pfft, old people. Oh, <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> Cue old people, like, bashing their phone, trying to get hold of me as quickly as possible. Yell at me down the line. Jonathan Ashworth, Labour's shadow paymaster general, said Rishi Sunak's weakness leaves him pandering to the extremists in his party. Rishi Sunak must put national interest before the Conservative Party. (laughs) Yeah, that's what he's going to do. He said, uh, Rishi Sunak must rule out this dangerous and desperate deal with them and the, um, uh, you know, Farage. This deal uh, that they claim doesn't exist, that threatens uh, international unity against Russian aggression and undermining vital support for Ukraine. Does it? He says if the Prime Minister refuses to publicly rule out such a desperate deal, it will be clearer than ever that Rishi Sunak is too weak to act in the nation's interest. He says Labour will always act in the nation's interest and our support for the people of Ukraine in the face of, in the face of Putin's illegal invasion is absolute. And blah, blah, blah. Don't start promising things that you can't necessarily deliver. But they're, they're failing in the blue wall. Uh, They're failing in the country overall, and they're failing in the C2DE social class. Although, having said that, almost a quarter of those who are the poorest people in the land are so thrilled with how everything is going that they want five more years of conservative rule. A quarter! What? Explain that to me, I double dare you. Uh, Jerry says, what became of the woman who used to call up and talk about the motoring party? She's been quiet for some time now. Surely their election manifesto must be ready soon. Don't encourage her. Maria says, I never trust anyone who cannot keep their, um, (laughs) their genitals private. Their privates private, I think you mean, uh, Maria. Can we get off that? Chris says, apparently Rishi's wife was out today to buy him a new suit. She was happy that she got a bargain in Prada with 30% off from the uh, kids' section. I think that uh, maybe some of these uh, texts need to be um, edited by convenience. Or um, by edited, I mean thrown away. What do you think? One moment. Hello, Nick. <laughs> I th- I'm saying, I think some of these texts need to be edited, by which I mean thrown away before can I, I see them. Can I point them. out that the usual glamorous assistant wasn't here for the last 10 minutes and now I'm back in? Higher standards will... Higher standards? Wow, I can't wait to see that. Higher standards? Can you imagine that? No. Higher than this? You're kidding. We have another gear. Blimey. I am stunned. So, the Conservative Party released an advert. I want to talk about that. And I want to talk about then the Labour Party's reaction to that advert. 
And don't let me go away tonight without talking about the uh, end of li all life on Earth as we know it. Because it seems to me that uh, a lot of newspapers are uh, setting us up for World War III. In the absence of anything else uh, important to write about, <laughs> it seems remarkable. They're, they're busy frightening us about uh, global thermonuclear war coming to a location near you soon. So I'll talk about that as well. I mean, I'm not complaining or anything, but it is the same people every single night. Come on. Uh, how about somebody new? Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. 0345 6060 973. Chris Tex, apparently, no, I read that. <laughs> I didn't like it the first time. <laughs> uh, Barry says, wasn't that Jeremy Hunt in the Star Wars film as the robot C3PO? Come on, no more material. David says, uh, can you imagine if William Grinder Wag was a Labour MP, the right wing media would be baying for him? Yes, they would. And there seems to be a, a certain lack of coverage about that, I'd say, in uh, certain uh, elements of the right wing press. Almost as though they want us to think about something else. Almost as though they want us to um, imagine how somehow this is Meghan Markle's fault. No! Yeah, thanks a lot, Meghan Markle. You see what you've done? Val says, sorry to tell you that in 1997, an old university friend who had been elected for Labour took me for lunch in the Houses of Parliament. You have to know the right people. <laughs> 1997. I do know the right people. All you've got to do is get in. But it was the last day of uh, school, essentially, there. It was uh, the last Prime Minister's questions before they had one of their interminable holidays. And uh, everybody was in um, uh, end-of-term mood. By which I mean... Booze. Yeah, they were drunk, off their feet. So all of the restaurants were fully booked, so I couldn't get in there, which is the only thing that I actually really wanted to go for. But you know me, I never complain. Whinging and whining and moaning. Uh, let's have Chelmsford. Claire. Hello, Nick. Claire. Hi, darling. Hi, it's lovely to talk to you. Claire, I used to live in Chelmsford. Oh, you poor thing. Not actually accurate. I used to go to school in Chelmsford. Uh, oh, I used, did you? I used to live in Rittle. Oh, that's so beautiful. They, they don't really consider themselves Chelmsford in oh, Rittle. No, they're think like, not. no, we're no. a village. We're, yeah. We are not Chelmsford. We are Rittle. Is it, you know, is it very... still a village? I would imagine oh, it's yeah. spread by now. <laughs> no, they've, they deliberately kept it isolated from the rest of us. Oh, well. Yeah. Is Boswell's yeah. comprehensive still there? It certainly is. Is yes. it? Yes, yes. Still going strong. Strong? So, well. <laughs> <laughs> Strongish. Yeah. Strongish, you know S what I mean. I mean you mean so, stronger, perhaps, yeah, than when maybe. I Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk to you about the Conservatives, mm -hmm. um, the campaigning you've been mentioning the last hour or so. Yeah. Um, and they're wonderful. I, I mean, I can't believe, first of all, that, that a party with so many donors, with so much money, mm. can spend so little on professional media marketing. They're just so useless oh, at it. Is what's remar um, I mean, they may be spending a lot of money, but um, it, it, <laughs> they should fire everybody involved, really. Well, let me tell you. I mean, I'm just looking at the thumbnail of the video that they have made. and Which one? Um, well, it, it was the one that was on X, formerly known as Twitter. <laughs> and, right, the, the it's thumbnail. the law to say that now. Elon Musk I must know. be thrilled. He, he tried to change it to X, and now it's known as X, formerly known as Twitter. Oh, yeah, I know. I know, but I feel such an idiot calling it X. I'm you know, not going to call know, it oh, X. You know, no, you mean, it'll you mean always Twitter. be Twitter to me. And me, and me also. So they, they've put this thumbnail up there, and it's badly cut out <clears> pictures <throat> yeah. of Rishi Sunak... And Aston Martin. Oh, that. Yeah, I was going to talk king. about have that. Have you seen yeah. it? Yeah, I have, it yeah. looks like the king is about to just give him a backhand slice across <gasps> the face, which I do <laughs> find quite amusing. But it's just, I think, surely a professional can't have done this. It, it can't have been done. One of the Tories' children must have done this, right? Uh, ma they I don't know. Have... Maybe somebody did it on, their, uh, on, on a phone in their left hand while they were taking pictures of themselves on a phone in their <laughs> right hand. And like they were multitasking while they were no, doing it. Yeah. I hadn't thought of that, but I reckon you're absolutely bang on. Yeah. yeah. And now yeah. it's not available on an internet near you. They've taken it down. Mm. Did you see that? Oh, yeah, it disappeared. Devastated. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks for pointing that out for me, Claire. Cheers, my dear. Lovely. Cheers. Bye. Don't talk down our country. That's what it said, that advert. 
Don't talk down our country on a Conservative Party advert. The same Conservative Party that recently published the video portraying London as a crime-ridden hellhole where it's uh, not safe to leave your house for fear of getting stabbed in a cycle lane. The Tory ad said, Britain is the second most powerful country in the world. What? What do they mean, second most? How unpatriotic is that? <laughs> the second most powerful country in the world. By what measure? They just made it up. Presumably because nobody would um, stop themselves from laughing out loud if they said that Britain is the most powerful country in the world. I, I don't know why they um, hedge their bets. Well, I mean, why not go the whole hog? If you're going to be silly, just be fantastically silly. And then they had a collage that features uh, Titchy Suit Size as the biggest image in that collage. Like he's the most important thing in this uh, country, as far as uh, you know, other countries are concerned. He's the thing that recommends this country most to the outside world. And the collage uh, also features a King Charles in a sparkly hat, encrusted with jewels that we stole from the third world. But you better not mention that, because that's too wokey. Walkie dokey. And the Tories have used images of... Um, <laughs> in order to illustrate how powerful we are, they used a picture of uh, an American fighter jet, a Euro fighter jet... And the clue's in the name there, Euro, uh, an unelected prime minister, the person who's running this government at the moment, uh, the England football team, which is, of course, not British, it's English. They said Britain is the mo second most powerful country in the world. And then they use the England football team. There's a cargo ship, which is not British, is registered in Panama. Aston Martin, of course. Well, that's British. No, it's not. It's owned by a, a Canadian billionaire, as far as I'm aware. I mean, at this moment, like five minutes ago, I think somebody else owned it. And five minutes before that, it was somebody else's. But I think at the moment, it's Canadian. And I do know that they use German engines in their car. And they used a picture of um, some bloke staring into a camera. And I had to look up who that was. And apparently, it's Christopher Nolan. Now, I don't know much about Christopher Nolan, other than his films are a little bit confusing. But I bet he's not a Tory. And even if he is, I bet he wouldn't want his picture used for a Tory advert. And, by the way, he lives in America. And it's a bit rich to feature a British filmmaker as a sort of a shorthand to British art when the government has continually defunded schools' arts courses and used art as the target of much of its culture wars nonsense. And, by the way, this story came and went last month. The UK is apparently, according to the people in this country, the second most miserable country in the world. Only Uzbekistan ranked lower than the UK in the Global Mental Wellbeing Index. And this was no uh, small survey. They asked 500,000 people from 71 countries about their uh, inner uh, feelings. It was a survey on people's uh, inner state and how it affects their ability to function. Half a million people responded. And scores under zero, uh, or uh, under zero, can you get under zero? Well, it depends how it's uh, constructed, but it says here, scores are under zero... Uh, represent distressed or struggling places. Scores between 0 and 50 mean enduring. 50 to 100 means managing. And 100 to 200 means succeeding or thriving. And Britain scored 49, as in below 50, which means enduring. We're enduring life. We're just suffering through it. It was a close tie between the UK and South Africa over who had the largest proportion of respondents who are distressed or struggling. It's over a third. And why would they be so miserable? This government. Exactly. <laughs> if this government spent a little less time creating risible collages in a desperate attempt to cling on to the power that they don't deserve, and a little more time trying to make things better for us poor dopes who pay taxes, then we might feel like we're the second most powerful country in the world. Apart from Germany, of course. And then there's France, 
and Japan and China. Uh, oh, never mind. I mean, this is getting depressing. And, and if we're only kept off the bottom of the misery index by South Africa. <laughs> Not, uh, cheer up, kids. It might never ha... Oh, no. That's right. It already has. And then the uh, Labour Party responded by saying, we can make collages too, you know. And they did. And there's a picture of Titchy Suit Size surrounded by headlines. And I'll give you a uh, taster. Public satisfaction with the NHS at lowest ever level, survey shows. UK economy went into recession last year, data confirms. Rishi Sunak unable to guarantee everyone will get promised childcare place. Mum forced to eat son's leftovers as she can't afford to feed herself on maternity leave. UK to pay Rwanda £2 million per person to relocate 300 people. <laughs> and they have the nerve to say that they are concerned about the public purse, about not wasting our money. They literally don't care how much money they waste as long as they can cling on to power. Cancer patients at risk due to treatment delays, doctors say. How taxes have soared to a near record high under Tory rule. 300,000 more UK children fell into absolute poverty at the height of the cost of living crisis. Shall I go on? No. <laughs> I pulled my teeth out with pliers as the dentist was 50 miles and a three year wait away. All headlines from newspapers with Titchy Suit Size's uh, little face right in the middle of them, looking pleased with himself. Actually looking like he's uh, just desperate to bite his nails. But he can't do it because he's on camera. Hospital cases for waterborne disease surge amid sewage crisis. You remember the sewage was dripping through the uh, ceilings of uh, hospitals? Not a good thing. One in five people in England awaiting NHS care. ONS data shows. UK food prices will keep rising through 2024, industry group warns. Pothole crisis reaches record high as numbers top 1 million. UK inflation forecast to be the highest in advanced economies this year and next. Crumbling schools plagued by leaks and cold. UK housing crisis. For more than a million people in England, a place to call home is a dream, not a reality. And... Two million crimes go unsolved in one year with knife offences up 75%, new figures show. But, you know, apart from that, how are the Conservatives doing? Oh, fabulous. <laughs> like I said, Titchy needs to fire everyone around him. You've got abysmal people working for you. In fact, I suspect that they are um, underhand. They're, 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 um, they, they got their jobs through underhand means. They're spies working for the other side. They're not on your side. And if, this is the, if they are, and this is the best they can do, well, I would get different people if I were you. <laughs> like right now, immediately. Don't waste another moment. Bye. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Are you trying to be funny? Because I'm all out of laughs. Yes, there's nothing funny about it. 0345 6060 973. Huddersfield, David. Now then, Nick, you've added a load of whinging, whining and moaning there. Who, me? You, you, you. Um, you know, other week I was telling you about Huddersfield and how prosperous it used to be. I know you won't remember. No, I don't I'll remember. Just refresh. You don't remember? I don't remember. Well, it was, and we had a thriving textile industry. Now... You talk about reasons why the Red Wall voted uh, for the Conservatives. We were yeah. promised le levelling up, not just yes. on the roads where the paint is, mm -hmm. but much, much more significantly than yes. that. Right. And then Mr Sunak said, I'm not going to give it to deprived areas, the resource. I'm going to give it to the wealthy. Yes. I think this is one of the biggest reasons that people in the marginal constituencies have decided you are having us on, mean, not meaning you, meaning mm. him. Yeah. So I think that's a huge reason why in the north that we're not uh, we're lose, losing faith with this government. Not that I voted for him in the first place, mind you. I, I think you're missing the B word, though, David. You mean Brexit? Yes, I do. Right. Well, ever since he went into helicopter sales and promotion, really, he sort of left Brexit behind, hasn't he? Really. Who what? Rishi. Rishi. <laughs> well, he's always, he's always coming off a helicopter, isn't he? Oh, that is true, yeah. I think the reason he likes helicopter flight 
he doesn't have to duck down, does he, when he's getting off and everybody else does? Uh, I think he likes helicopter flight because it uh, doesn't mean it means that he won't have to interact with any member of the public unless there is a camera pointing at him. Oh, you could be right. So anyway, we were promised levelling up. I mean, we had it prosperous here in 1860s. My, my great-great-granddad was actually with an abbot and lived in Liverpool, funnily enough, hmm. uh, and ra- ran a cobbler's shop. Um, he, you know, we had prosperity in the north because of the ports. You were talking about Hull earlier. And they had a massive fishing industry, of course, before the B word. Yeah. And they don't now, do they? Not in the same way. The shipbuilding industry was well, huge. Well, you know, I wish, that, I, I wish that somebody uh, before the Brexit uh, referendum had actually said something to the people that were thinking about voting for Brexit, that it might not be a great idea. But unfortunately, nobody said a word. Well, I told all my friends the reason that I was going to vote to uh, remain was because we hadn't had a war for about 75 years at the time. Mm. And now we're deeply involved in two. But that's not my only complaint anyway. You said you don't do homework. No. But, But you misled us, didn't you? In what way? You started studying... George Galloway's head in your own time. Well, I, I think s- studying is uh, is a is a bit. Um, is, well, I is, gathered that you zoomed in. Zoomed in? No, that doesn't sound like me. No. <laughs> so I, anyway, that I just watched situation. him on TV because he was hatless on TV when he went into the uh, into the Houses of Parliament because you're not allowed to wear a hat, and. Sure. Um, I just think that he it, it's a, an affectation. I think he l- thinks that he looks good in a hat, and he quite possibly does look a more rakish in a hat than outside of one. And he stimulated the independents to sort of make a bit of a charge, haven't they, for this general election that's coming up? I bet... I mean, can you remember the furore when he actually got elected? People were talking about it like it's the end of the first civilization as we know it. And, and what happened? Mm-hmm. No, absolutely nothing. Exactly the same as what happened last time he was an MP. Oh, Exactly. <laughs> All right, good work. Well, anyway, thanks, thanks a lot, thanks David. A lot. Cheers. Ta-da. 0345 6060 973. Uh, Swindon, Trevor. Hello, good morning. Yes, sir. Right, OK. Um, I've got, first question is, what time did you get up today? What's your second question? No, what time did you get up today? Yep, yeah, just so as I know where we're going, what's the second question? Well, well the second question is irrelevant. What time did you go up today, please? <laughs> well, I'm only interested in answering the second question. All right, Kevin Cloggs. Right. My point is, I said to oh, your producer... Oh, there's a point. Yes. Right, OK. I said to your producer, everyone, zeros and fives are telling lies. So what does you that might mean? have got up at. Well, it means you you might have got up at um, quarter past one or quarter to one, but you didn't get up on on the dot. That's from so zeros and fives are telling lies. Right, that's twice you've said it, and you also explained it, and I still don't understand. Right, okay. When everyone talks about how much <laughs> money it costs for wars and all that kind of lava, they always end it in zeros or fives. Because they round it up. That's what I was trying to say to you. All oh, right. We well, should have just said that right at the beginning. Then we could have saved a lot of time there, Trevor. Zeros and fives are uh, telling lies. That That's just a numerical fact. <phone rings> Unfortunately, we're not interested in facts on this show. Thanks a lot, mate, for, you know, whatever that was. <sighs> Oldbury, Ranjit. How are you, mate? Hello, Ranjit. Oh, yeah, you okay. I was just going to have a look outside, see if it was a full moon, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm Even if it isn't, it. it is. Yeah. You know, just a quick one on, um, you know, Voltra ID? Yeah. They're introducing it in India as well. They're trying to do it there. Mm-hmm. So Mr. Maldi can win a third term. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it, the, an idea that they stole off the Republican Party of um, the people that ru- the, that work Donald Trump like a puppet. Oh, yeah. shut up! Those people. Yeah. And the other thing, you know, everybody's been talking about the Red Wall, yeah? I don't want people to read too much into what I'm saying, but, you know, Brexit and the Red Wall was peddled a lot about immigration and everything, yeah? Mm. Okay. 
Oh, somebody pointed out to me yesterday that something in the Old Testament says, if you let enough people into your country, one day they will rule you. That was in the Old Testament somewhere. Okay. <laughs> How do you know so that? I don't know. Somebody no. showed it me. Oh, anyway. and listen, right. I, said, I, said, I said to him, I said, yeah, but you know what? You know, the Vikings came, and then the um, Anglo-Saxons came, and then the Romans. And I said, if you really look into your ancestry, you'll find you're a Johnny foreigner as well. Yeah, who isn't? And he, yeah, and he, and he didn't quite like that. <laughs> right? So what's happened in the Red Wall now? Because people like Suella Bravo, well, Corella Doberman and um, Priti Patel, they've all been talking about immigration, yeah? You know when we say a broken clock right twice a day? Some of these people must have thought, hey, listen, man, all these guys keep on talking about immigrants, but we've been ruled by immigrants now, right? So, you know, these guys now have shot themselves in the foot, people like Rishi Sunak, yeah? And people, I don't know what you think, but do you think people have started to see his colour as well now, right? Not not his blue colour, but his colour that he's, he's an ethnic like I am. Yes, I'm not being racist or anything like that. <laughs> but. but people are trying to bring that into it as well. And what do you think, Nick? Has that got, has that got any merit to it? Um, you I know, all this wokeness and that. Wokeness has backfired on him now. Yeah, I'm because not sure he, that's true. He, he, well, it might not be totally true. Now, that's why I did kind of give that little disclaimer at the start. Don't read too much into what I'm trying to say. But when I hear from people, right, when they talk to me, oh, well, we've been ruled by foreigners. And I think, man, you know, you're talking to a brown man here. And then they go, no, yeah, but you're all right. And I think now that kind of thing has started playing in the Red War. And I think that's got quite a... You know, this this thing about when people were saying, oh, well, he's rich and one day I'm going to be rich as well. Mm. You know, they still dream that thing, right? You know, like what James O'Brien says in the morning, that the poor man outside the rich man's castle thinks that we're all equal, right? But now I think that has got something to do with it from what I hear from people, you know, like... Well, the poor, yeah, the, the, yeah the, the poor man rich man thing is that people in this country, I don't know, it's almost like we're still serfs. We still doff our caps. We just can't help ourselves. It's ingrained in us from birth, and so, which is why people like this... My view... ...are um, treated as some sort of god, and everything he says is uh, received as though it is uh, laden with wisdom. But the man's a, a, a like seven foot bean pole of a hundred percent chump. Practically nothing he says is right. We could have cheaper food, clothing, and footwear straight away by getting rid of the protectionist anti-trade tariffs that the EU imposes. Imposes. And um, just because he speaks like that, he's been able to get away with it his entire life. That affected accent of his. If he didn't speak like that, no one would pay the blindest bit of attention to him. I mean, he's 100% silly. It's just that he talks like that, so people are deferential to him. It's excruciating. And the, and the poorer you are, the more deferential you are. That's what I, I just cannot understand that. I, can, I find it very, very hard to get my head around that. That the people who have nothing defend people like that and go absolutely apoplectic when uh, people like me criticise him. Oh, that's the politics of envy, that is. <laughs> it's almost like we're living in a Monty Python sketch. Uh, yeah, that's probably not the answer you were looking for, uh, Ranjit, but that's the only one that I've got at the moment right now because it's just exclusion. It's just, uh, it's uh, enervating. It's not energising, it's enervating. And um, I've, I, I'm at the end of my tether. Don't push me because I'm close to the edge. <laughs> Oh three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. I mean, the other thing on that subject is if um, Pretty Patel and Suella Bradman and uh, Rishi Sunak think that the, the the public, the the people in this country want to export uh, those with a different coloured skin than them, and as they're ushering them onto the plane. They imagine that the people in this country would say, oh, not, not you, Suella, or, um, uh, or Pretty, or Rishi. No, you can stay. But they're out of their minds. They want them on that plane too. You think they're going to differentiate? 
you, I mean, they just don't know what they've started. I, well, they do know precisely what they've started. It's just that uh, they've um, built a wall of money that protects them from the consequences of what they've started. But anyway, I don't want to get into any of that. I want to talk about global thermonuclear war because, you know, that's funny. <laughs> There's just some humour in that. It's not a lot, but a bit. I have detailed files. Leave it with me. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. I'm taking you off the air. I think you're having a breakdown. Yes, I think I'm having a breakdown. 0345 6060 973. Kate texts, did you read that Liz Truss attended Nigel Farage's party? Unbelievable, says Kate. We've got a few idiots in our party. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Yeah, and the man of the people then went to, um, it was, it was uh, I don't know, some fancy schmancy place out in the Docklands, wasn't it, that he had his birthday party. And then he went to, an, you know, the, the flat hat and a pint man, you know, honest, uh, down to earth, the man of the people. He went to Scots. Oh. I've never been there in my life. That's a celeb hangout, that is. That's one of the most expensive restaurants in the world. His uh, natural milieu. The, the flat hat and a pint routine, that's just an act. Zach uh, says, uh, I spoke to a tube driver on the central line today and he told me he enjoyed your show. He listens to it every night, Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays as I do. Keep up the great work, says Zach. You spoke to a tube driver? How'd you do that? They're in their little uh, cubicle. Safe from the rest of the uh, mouth-breathing public who are um, you know, occupying the seats behind them. Probably the best part of the train to be on. How did you speak to a tube drive? Not while the uh, train was in motion, I hope. You're not allowed to do that on a bus. They get very, very upset. Uh, Worthing, Anne Louise. Hi. Hello. Anne Hello. Louise. How are you? I am great, mate. I'm glad to hear that, Miss Rabbit. I've got the right post, the right nick. I've just been told there are two of you at the station at the moment, so it must yeah. get a bit hectic. It is, yeah. Yes. You, you have to be called Nick uh, or James to have a. Uh, that's, job that's the middle name. Always give somebody LBC. a good middle name, and then if they hate what their parents have called them, they get a choice, don't they? Yeah. Unless they, unless they get, I don't know. They sound like an awful pun unless they've got a nickname and you're both called Nick, which is why you need good middle and third names. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, yes, now, <laughs> sorry, mate. All around the houses with that one. Um, just happened to tune in, haven't tuned in since last year, apparently, according to your records. Um, Nick, you, you, you have a lovely... Um, we have records sorry. on when yeah. you tuned in last. You're joking. Yeah, right. Um, well, I thought the surveillance had gone far. I didn't think it had gone quite that far. But, you know, if they can turn you off the internet in Central Europe and... Um, have Koreans surveying everybody everywhere around the world, and you know, and we have GPS, and we have all these wonderful, wonderful things that we're using for war instead of peace. It does make you wonder, doesn't it? Uh, well, I'm wondering uh, right now what the hell is going on, if that's any help. Well, you and the rest of the uh, intelligent world, probably. Yeah. You know, because most of us actually just quite like to see our grandchildren grow up, or our great grandchildren grow up, and I'm sure people. Back in, as I was saying to your producer, you know, we might as well be living 200 years ago because we've learnt nothing. We could be living 400 years ago. We have learnt nothing. Right, I'm, 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 you, still, wondering, know, I'm still wondering what the hell is going on. Anne-Louise, please tell me yes. what the hell is going on with um, this particular well, I, call <laughs> at the I moment. Knew that, um, Nick, if I knew what was going on, I'd be ruling the world instead of the people who are ruling okay, the world. OK, well, as soon as you have an idea, I want you to let me know straight away. Thanks a lot, uh, Anne-Louise. Holy moly. <laughs> What is happening on this show? This show was like this when I got here. <laughs> Graham texts, I repaired a pothole outside my house with a bag of asphalt. Uh, no, asphalt. Asphalt. How do you say it? Asphalt. With a bag of asphalt from a local DIY store and a wooden board. I ran over it with my car to push it down flat. A passing... A passing Tesco home delivery van stopped and offered to run it over with this fully loaded van. Job done, says Graham. Huh. So I've got a couple of uh, massive potholes that have uh, opened in a location near me, and I can't imagine that anybody's going to do anything about them. So I'm thinking about... Because it's in a location where you kind of run over it a lot. It's just, you just can't help but do that. Um, and I, I keep thinking I'll do it myself. 
But then I, my, I hesitate because I think it's probably against the law, isn't it? How can that be against the law to actually help? I mean, Rod Stewart helped, didn't he? No one's arresting Rod Blumin Stewart, are they? Tony Tex, did you know that in 2019, Rishi Sunak was pickpocketed outside Parliament? How could anyone stoop so... <laughs> How could anyone stoop so low? A listener with material. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, what sweet relief. Laughter. <laughs> <laughs> 0345 Stains. Ugh. Maria. Oh, hello. Maria. I've thoroughly enjoyed this evening with you on the radio. Um, Thanks. I, that's right. Um, I was just baffled this evening. I was listening about this whole William Rag story, and I'm like, I don't understand why... Like, if he sent these pictures of his private mm. and um, he's worried he's going to be a black man, he's given these numbers. And it's like, well, what, like, what's so particular about your thing that, like, you're worried about being blackmailed? Like, how, how are oh. we going to know to you? It could be <laughs> anyone. Do you have a tattoo on it? Right. What's going on? Does he, does he sign it? What? Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, <laughs> you could say it's anyone. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, maybe he didn't think about that because, you know, he, he he's uh, in the common sense group, not the smart group. <laughs> I just thought I so want him to have rag tattooed on his penis. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> But you you raise That's you raise a good point if I can use that phrase in this context. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Maria. O three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. I want to talk about war. Why isn't anybody letting me talk about war? I also want to talk about um a story came and went last month about a fictional MP. Do you remember that story? People were asked what they thought about a, an MP that doesn't actually exist in real life. Oh, they had, uh, you know, they had a lot of opinions about it. Oh, <laughs> so I'll get into that. And um, maybe this now. This is a, this, it may be a complete accident, it may be a coincidence, or it may be an indication of where we're going, that the next election is going to be the dirtiest that has uh, ever been uh, prosecuted in this country. A Conservative MP in Devon has been accused of deceiving voters by using internet addresses in a Liberal Democrat opponent's name that direct web users to his own campaign site. What? Did you understand what I just said? Shall I say it again? No. Three web domains that purport to link to websites connected to a person called Richard Ford, who is the Liberal Democrat candidate for this seat of Honiton and Sidmouth. The websites connected to Richard Ford, in fact, direct people to the campaign website of Tory MP Simon Jupp. Not Mickey Jupp. Rock and roll! He's an old uh, pub rock and roller from uh, the 1970s. Did excellent work. Had, had a fantastic album out on uh, Stiff Records called Legend. And he certainly was. No, this is Simon Jupp. So the web domains in Richard Ford's name, the Liberal Democrat candidate for this seat direct people to the campaign website of the Tory MP, Simon Jubb. Isn't that totally shocking? No. Aren't you completely stunned? No. Tory MP, Simon Jubb, the current MP for East Devon, and Richard Ford, the Liberal Democrat MP for Tiverton and Honiton, have both seen their constituencies abolished under the boundary changes and they're now fighting over uh, the same place. When the I newspaper visited richardford.uk and richardford.co.uk and richardford.com web addresses, they all link directly to Tory MP Simon Jupp's website. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I mean, it's not known who bought the internet addresses as ownership records uh, currently point to, to a web buying uh, site in uh, Worcestershire. A spokesman for the Lib Dem, Mr Ford, said, when we talk to people across Mid and East Devon, they tell us they want their representative to play it straight and to be honest. He said, links that look genuine but simply redirect to conservative websites only serve to arouse suspicion and undermine trust. Well... I mean, some might think that arousing suspicion and undermining trust is the plan. We have a plan, 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 plan and plan, plan and plan, plan, or you just go back to square one. Yeah, let's go back to square one. Lib Dem MP Richard Ford, who overturned a huge Tory majority in Tiverton and Honiton following the resignation of Tory MP Neil Parrish, after he was found to have watched pornography in the House of Commons... Disgusting. uh, ...has the official website address of richardford.org.uk. But that's pretty much the only one in his name that is his. All of the others direct you to the Tories' website. Apparently, web, web domains are inexpensive to buy and easy to... Uh, unless it's sex.com, in which case it's going to cost you a bomb, apparently. Web, uh, and that's all you need. You need uh, a time machine and to go back in time and just uh, at the side of the internet, just collect, uh, you know, sex.com and... Um, natwest.com and bp.com and all of those and uh, then you go sit back and uh, smoke a cheroot and uh, by, uh, by the end of the year you'll be a billionaire web domains are inexpensive to buy once the web domain is owned it's a simple process to redirect it to any other website already in existence with the 2nd of May local elections approaching and a general election expected later this year campaign leaflets from all parties have begun, have begun appearing through voters letterboxes in recent elections, the unpopularity of the Conservative candidates, says the I newspaper, in some areas of the country, has led to its candidates withholding which party they represent from their campaign material. Vote for my party, they say. Which one's that, comes the reply. It's a secret, they say. Oh, well, you know, count me in. You've got my full support, whoever you are. A uh, spokesman for the Electoral Commission said exactly what you would expect from a watchdog these days. Nothing to see here. Please move along. What a way to run a country, eh? Dreadful. 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. So I want to talk about an MP that doesn't exist. And uh, also, the press's current obsession with the third world war that to come and uh, you know anything else that uh, crosses our minds 03456060973 leading britain's conversation with nick abbott hi honey how are you think you're talking to uh, myself most of the time 03456060973 Tom says, I just looked up that poster. He's talking about the advert that the Tories uh, just put out and then hastily withdrew. I don't think it's available on the World Wide Wait anymore, uh, apart from uh, on the um, the, the social media feeds of people that had the foresight to save it. But um, please don't retweet that because the Conservatives would be very, very upset because it draws attention to their silliness. Anyway, Tom says, I just looked up that poster. It looks like something an insane Cold War propagandist threw together while learning to use Microsoft Paint. (laughs) It does look particularly cheap and badly done. He says, my husband and I moved to Ireland to escape the multiple skip fires making up the UK these days. It looks even more abnormal from a functional country, says Tom. Wow. That is giving this whole country a slap. Uh, This uh, email says, I just got my first smartphone. What apps do you recommend? I got one so I can see when the bus comes. I'll probably use that. Do I want anything else? (laughs) Um, Yeah, get Global Player. With Global Player, you can listen to my podcast. I got three. One is the one that I do with Carol McGiffin. Oh, right, yeah. Which I think you'll find a hoot and a half. It's called What's Your Problem with Nick and Carol? One is the um, the Nick Abbott Habit, which is clips from old shows. It's uh, 30 minutes long, comes out on a Monday. Concentrated amusement. I think you'll love it. The Nick Abbott Habit. 
And we also, from the Friday and Saturday night shows, do a podcast of these shows. Uh, Friday and Saturday night shows get stuck up the internet as a podcast. It's exclusive to Global Player, so you will need it to listen to it. Uh, Global Player is free, by the way. You can get it from uh, your favorite app store or globalplayer.com. And the idea of uh, putting the Friday and Saturday night shows up as a podcast is that we take the news and the ads out, most of the ads, mostly, which means it takes less time to listen to. You'll use less electricity. And with the money you save, you'll be able to update your phone because, I mean, it's days old now, and that's just embarrassing. They've got to have new ones out by now. And the uh, podcast is called... Um, <laughs> what's it called? The Nick Abbott, the whole show podcast. That's what it's called. Yeah. If you've got one of them stupid smart speakers, that's the magic phrase. Play Nick Abbott, the whole show podcast. Bath Ellis. Hello. Hi, uh, Mr. Abbott. Hi, sir. Yes, sir. How are you? Great, How mate. You? I'm doing super. Yeah, Thanks for yeah. asking. Uh, yeah, how's, yeah, that Carol, yeah, yeah. How's, that Carol, how's that Carol getting on? Carol's anyway? doing right? just fine. Yeah. Yeah, she's doing Christmas carols. <laughs> Who? But anyway, I digress. Mm. I digress. It, it, one of your colleagues... Now... Hello? Yes? Yeah, anyway, one of your colleagues... <laughs> hello? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes? Yes. Yeah, hello? Um, mm-hmm. Shut up. Was one... Hello? Was one of the only... Uh, Bill Hine... One of my colleagues Wait, was one of the only Bill Hind. Did you just say he, that? Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah he, the, the one and only, the late Bill Hiner. Who's that? From, uh, he's radio presenter from the BBC. One of my um, colleagues? Well, he was a colleague, yes, then. Um, however... Can I just uh, pause you? Can I uh, just hold you there just for a moment, uh, Ellis? Is, uh, is, is this something I want to take? Sorry, Nick, I needed my headphones on that. Uh, yes. Is this a call I want to take? Ellis, why not? <laughs> why not? Well, Stand- I've got a whole list of reasons so far. Why not? OK. Ellis. I, sh- I shoved a shark in my roof. You shoved a shark in your roof? Yes. Well, that makes as much sense as anything else you've said so far. No. Are, you, you, are you the bloke with a oh, shark? Oh. Wait, wait a minute. Oh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Pause. Just take a breath. Are you the bloke with the shark on his roof? I put it in there and sold it to Bill Hine from the BBC. Okay, so it's not really getting... uh, It's not making any more sense. So I'll just leave it there. I'll just drop it uh, by the side of the road uh, like a bag of uh, doggy (laughs) do. Or I'll tie it to a tree like people do. Like um, (laughs) the world's worst Christmas tree ornament. Why do they do that? What is the point of collecting doggy do in a bag and then tying it to a tree? What I mean, why go through the process of collecting it and then tying it to a tree? Why don't you just leave it there if that's what you're going to do? That mystifies me. As much as pretty much anything else has happened on this show so far. And I know it's not my fault. Yvonne says, uh, how far did Rod Stewart get with repairing his local potholes? Um, I don't know. I mean, as far as he got his picture taken repairing potholes, I don't know how many he repaired or to what extent he repaired them and how far he went down the road and whether they're still repaired. No idea. Uh, Dave says, Titchy Suit Size is praying for a nuclear Armageddon so he can cancel the general election for our safety and stay PM forever. Well... <laughs> I wonder if it's crossed his mind. Probably not. Let's assume not. But do we want to talk about that now? Well, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit close to the break, but I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it afterwards. Because the press seems to be obsessed with this now. Obsessed with frightening us to death about um, a forthcoming uh, global thermonuclear war. I mean, the, the amount of stories that I've read about our imminent destruction is too numerous to mention. On, are, you, are you still there, Ellis? Yes. Okay, great. Well, you've delighted us enough. We appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> I, 
I mean, you know, I, I expect it wasn't going to make more sense than it already had. I think I did the right thing. Bill texts, since the bank crash in 2008, it is now apparent that the UK is bust. Whoever runs the UK, it won't get any better until there is a reset like what happened in Russia with the collapse of the Soviet Union. Russia is strong again, says Bill. And we have to go through the same process. Taxing the people with all the wealth would be a start. Well, I agree with that last part. Just not the parts before the last part. Russia is strong again. I'm not sure that's correct. And uh, Caroline says, please, 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 with sugar on top, can you play the techno sound effect? As I haven't heard it for ages, and it's my absolute fave. Hashtag withdrawal symptoms, <laughs> says Caroline. Well, let me think about that. No, 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 no. No, it's not a request show, Caroline. I absolutely will not do that. Sandbatch, hello, John. I have... Um, I- who the hell are the rail delivery group and all these are the crank bots who all come on uh, all with with this uh, think tank this and think tank that I mean who the hell are they most of them are right <laughs> right wing people aren't they when paid did, for wh- by some other yeah where did this uh, come from what has this got to do with anything that we were talking about I mean I agree with you who who, are the, who the hell are they yeah I mean but what, what I was going to speak about what you ran about before about we got a sort of a chip on our shoulder, and people like Rees Mogg come on and we, oh. we all doff our caps. Yeah. I always think of that film, uh, song in that film, um, or oh, what Jungle Book, who we do, I want to I want to be like, like you, who, who. Who, yeah. And that's, I want to walk that's, like you, talk like you, who, who, who. Yeah. And then that sums up loads of people who, who, who are all conservative to me, who don't really should... Con- we shouldn't really vote conservative. It is remarkable that the the demographic that you would think would be Labour are actually Tory. It's not the rich people that are voting conservative. It's the poor people, and and that just blows my mind on a regular basis. Here is a yeah. here's a recording of my mind being blown. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. Yeah, I know, and, and that lady wants to wants was on about her phone. She can borrow mine. I've got a tw- mom speaking on a, a twelve year old flip phone. A flip phone. Wow, don't yeah. hold it to your ear, John. It'll boil your brain. <laughs> <laughs> That's too late. For too that. late for that, yeah. You, <laughs> you just beat me to it. All right, good work. Thanks a lot, John. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. I enjoy working with people. Yeah, sure I do. Mm-hmm. 0345 Um... Uh, there was one I was going to read. That, uh, here it is. Faraz says, Watcher Nick, as I listened to your show for too many years to count, can you please ensure the 12 a.m. bulletin includes a small 50th birthday shout out to my good self? Absolutely, Faraz. <laughs> Here's a call in East Yorkshire by a person called Mike. Mike? <laughs> Morning, Nick. Yeah. Um couple of public service bits first. You had someone ring in about DAV reception in Cambridge. It went off at one o'clock and it's still off. So is it? Yeah, it is. So don't go on that front. Second bit, you had a caller just before the 12 o'clock news saying, um, these people who are exchanging photos of Todgers, how do they know who it is and what it is? Well, James <laughs> asked this question on Friday morning. Oh, a, in the morning uh, when children uh, are listening, I can't believe it. And a very helpful grinder user rang in and explained how it's done. What you do is you take a video of yourself starting with your face and moving downwards. Oh. And then you send that so that people, when if they're doing a hookup, they can tie the face to the subject. And that's how it's done, apparently. And this was on James <laughs> O'Brien and Friday morning. No. <laughs> I am yeah. stunned. I'm going to uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to go home after this show and wash my radio in the sink. I can't believe it. <laughs> well, the reason I rang up was um, about soon that because there was a, a journalist interviewing a Tory backbencher this morning, and they asked him, "Should you get rid of soon that? Do you need a new leader?" And he mm. said, well, "Probably wouldn't make much sense." But what the party needs is a trust-like leader 
<laughs> but just not trust. Not trust. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, well, when you think about it, they're not very thick on the ground, these, because you've got to get someone with a squawky voice who's not very bright, who's umbilically linked to every right-wing, totally funded think tank in Texas. Yeah. In Houston Street. Mm-hmm. There's not many of them about, really. Well, you <laughs> used the wrong phrase there. They're not... They're, they're, they're not very thick on the ground. I think that that's exactly what they are. Whether they're, they're thick on the ground, they're thick in the air, depending on where they happen to be at any given moment. Yeah. But it just varies. I mean, anyone who saw that clip who, who's got a mortgage or anything else will think they really want another trust. Yeah. They can't they, look for this lot. They have <laughs> lost their minds. I think that um, I think there needs to be an intervention. I think so, yeah. All right. Okay. Thanks for the good <laughs> yeah. news, Mike. Cheers, mate. 0345 6060 973. Okay. Here's this story about a fictional MP. A fictional MP has scored better for name recognition than a real Labour frontbencher in a poll. <laughs> a survey asked Brits whether they were aware of a variety of politicians who are, uh, who are in Keir Starmer's top team. And they said, as with one voice, no, no, which is not a surprise, really. I mean, only Westminster geeks would know who is in Keir Starmer's top team. The rest of us aren't that bothered because they don't have any power. They're not in government and they're hardly ever seen on TV because they aren't in government and they don't have any power. However, the research by Portland Communications also threw in the name Fiona Wilson who does not exist. And they asked the public what they thought of the real names of the people that do exist in Keir Starmer's top team and this fictional Fiona. With the predictable result that uh, Fiona Wilson, the person that does not exist, was recognised by more people than knew the names of the real politicians who do exist. Which is another excellent reason why you should not ask the public what they think because they might tell you. 47% of those who expressed a preference claimed to be aware of this fictional Fiona and 15% felt very favourable towards her. (laughs) Oh, that Fiona Wilson. Oh, she is great. (laughs) I mean, that's Fiona for you. Uh, or just Fiona's in general. They're a very likeable sort. And that favourability rating, by the way, puts her ahead of some of the party's actual biggest stars, including Thang, Thangam Debonair, who is a real person and not just a wonderful collection of syllables I threw together. And you might be thinking, typical Labour supporter doesn't even know who's real. Well, the pollsters found the exact same result when they offered a fake Tory name. But they didn't go with a Fiona. They went with a Henry. Of course they did. A fictional Conservative minister called Henry Thorpe. Henry Thorpe, who does not exist, was better known than the Energy Secretary. The Energy Secretary? Anybody? Anyone at all? Claire Coutinho. And as a rough guide to where we are as a nation, people quite liked the made-up Labour politician, but they actively disliked the made-up Tory politician, who had a net favourability rating where you add up the positive scores and take away the negative ones of minus five. Minus five favourability rating of the fake Tory politician. And that puts up puts the made-up Tory MP in the top tier of Conservative ministers as far as the uh, public are concerned. (laughs) The British people are now at the position where we hate a Tory minister even if they don't exist. (laughs) Is this part of the plan? How's the plan going? Fabulous. Good grief. 0345 So I want to talk about uh, the Third World War, but I don't think I've got time enough before the news to do it. Uh, the news might actually contain the news that uh, we're already in the uh, Third World War, in which case um, I won't need to uh, bother you with any of that. But we'll see when we get there. 
William texts, following on from your conversation about war being hyped up by those on the right, maybe that's the plan, as a war won't probably be any different to the day-to-day. Schools falling down, trains not running, health system overwhelmed. Don't want to be too conspiracy theorist about it, says William. Too late, William. Tony says, did you know... Um, no, that was the uh, that, was that, that joke that I read some uh, while ago. How could anyone stoop so low? <laughs> Uh, Jim says, did you know that Robert the Bruce, the medieval Scottish king chap, is believed to have been born in Rittal, where I used to live? It's my favourite Rittal fact, says Jim. And I did not know that. Um, And I'm not sure that that's true. But even if it is, then um, I still didn't know it. As far as I know, or as far as I was aware at the time, the only claim to fame that Rittle had was that it had something to do with Marconi. And I was very young when I was there, and it was just a name that came up a lot. But further than that, I can't tell you. Other than that, I know nothing. And uh, Jack emails, leave the Tories alone. They're doing their best. Yeah, I actually believe that that's true, which is um, the the most worrying thing I've read out on this show today. (laughs) <laughs> and that's been a packed list. They're doing their best. This is their best. Can you believe that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Hampstead, Isan. Yes, hello. Hello, Nick. How are you? Great, mate. Yes. Uh, it's an honour to speak to you. I'm a fan, a big fan. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I think honour yes, yes. might be stretching it a bit. Go ahead. No, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. Anyhow, I heard you mention um, a few minutes ago that you wanted to talk about war. I wanted to talk about global thermonuclear war and nothing less. Okay, so I have something to say to to sort of, you know, answer back to you because you, you wish. I'm, I have a statement about anti-war, if you don't mind. Anti-war. Uh, yeah, not war. So, so res- resolving a dispute of Russia and Ukraine. My proposal is that Russia is for centuries has been looking for a warm sea port because the port in Vladivostok it freezes in winter time and it's unusable. Yeah. So the the, the port in Ukraine, uh, which I think it's called uh, Marlipol, and yeah, um, Maripol. If yeah, there are two na- their neighbor countries, Ukraine and Russia. So I think NATO and Ukraine should wisely uh, give Marlipol to Russia and have Russia compensate them by perhaps financing uh, a port in, in Ukraine on the Black Sea. And then, you know, it's problem solved. Problem Hopefully. solved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure that that's going to happen anytime uh, So not, uh, not uh, willingly anyway. But uh, good thinking there, Isan. He's just trying to help. Just trying to be of assistance. Appreciate it, Hassan. Um... Josh texts, Nick, whoever has your sound effects at the ready needs a huge raise. (laughs) What do you you mean, whoever has my sound effects at the ready? Me, I'm doing it. That's not the first time I've heard that. People ring in in a state of great agitation and actually argue with me about who is playing these sound effects. (laughs) It's me. (laughs) How can anybody know ahead of time what I'm about to say in order for them to select the sound effect? Um. Think. You're not thinking, Josh. Damien says, with regards to a doggy doing a bag on a tree, I must confess I do that as I'll be on a walk and I'll be coming back that way rather than carry it in my pocket as a horrible hand (laughs) hand warmer. Oh, I can see it easily, grab it on my way home and put it in the bin. I can only assume that other people do it, but also forget to collect it. You're kidding me. Well, aren't there usually bins for doggy do, where you would walk your doggy? You you tie it to a tree as a an aid memoir for when or on your return you can spot it and record. Oh, that's where I left it. <laughs> <laughs> and pick it up and put it in the bin on your way home. Well, I am stunned. On a regular basis. It's like I've been hit in the head with a shovel. <laughs> um, 
Frank says, hi, uh, Nick, God help us if we have a nuclear war. They won't know what to do. With the COVID virus, we lost we lost thousands. If we go nuclear, it'll be millions. Great show, exclamation mark, says Frank. <laughs> so, you know, he's upset, but he's not that upset. Uh, Keith says, it's reported that the Royal Navy are sending a ship to help with humanitarian aid in Gaza, but for security reasons, they're not stating the name of the ship. I've heard the Mersey Ferry will be running at a reduced service for the next few months. Is there a connection? Just asking. <laughs> Um, and uh, Jen emails I'm about 40 minutes behind with your show so I'm on catch up and for the first time I am praying that your show doesn't create the mood of those obscure TV channels that talk about fishing for carp or car motors from the 1950s please enough with the asphalt or asphalt as I would call it but having uh, actually concentrated on that word and looking at, at, at it written down it's not asphalt of course or well, because there would be an S, that would be A S H P H A L T, and it ain't that. It's asphalt, but I, that just doesn't sound very nice. I don't want to drive on asphalt. Who does? I don't want any part of my car touching asphalt. O three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. I should remind you that uh, one of the podcasts I do is called The Nick Abbott Habit, which is 30 minutes of concentrated amusement. It comes out on a Monday. And I trail, uh, I uh, trawl rather, through old shows and pick out the funny parts. Um, it's uh, about half an hour long, comes out on a Monday. It's called the Nick Abbott Habit. If you have a half an hour in a week and you wish to be amused, I think it'll be right up your alley. Ask for it by name on an internet near you. The Nick Abbott Habit. Oh, is that the time already? Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Anybody care what this guy thinks? No! Peter emails, a stopped clock is correct only twice a day. Somebody had uh, used that phrase on this show earlier on. He says, by the same premise, a clock that loses one second per year is correct only once every 43,200 years. Well, that may be uh, statistically accurate, but we're not interested in facts on this show. Simon says, many of the UK's military top brass have been saying for years that if we scrapped Tiden, Tiden, Trident, we could afford to substantially increase the size of our Air Force, Army and Navy, ensure our brave armed forces personnel are properly funded, housed and equipped. As the late Baroness Thatcher pointed out, the whole point of the nuclear deterrent was to prevent all war, not just nuclear war. That's clearly failed, so it is pointless throwing any more taxpayers' money at Trident, says Simon. I couldn't agree more. It's a giant waste of money. And probably won't work when it comes down to it. I mean, nothing else works in this country. Why do we think that they, they were smashing our hand down on the big green button, the mark go, is actually going to have any effect? <laughs> I mean, has anybody thought about that? Absolutely nothing else works in this country. Why would that work? This is um, Caroline's husband, Tommy. He says, Caroline fell asleep and missed you reading her request to play the techno music. Can you please play the music to wake her up so I can tell her that you read her message? No. <laughs> Another satisfied customer. And um, Ashley says, if you want to talk uh, nuclear Armageddon, let's talk threads. Probably, properly traumatizing film. I've never seen it. So I'm certainly not going to be doing that. But... This is the story in the mail. I mean, they, they, there seems to be something in the air. I, I don't know what it is. Maybe, maybe uh, it, the World War III has already started and this is the result of nuclear fallout. But they just keep going on and on and on about it. It's still 90 seconds to midnight, according to the doomsday clock, says the Express. Wake up, it's time to die. They say the war, not the Express, this is the mail. They say the war in Ukraine, North, Korea, uh, North Korean peacocking... Is that what they're doing? <laughs> Peacocking. And the breakdown of a deal with Iran to limit nuclear proliferation have all contributed to talk of the nuclear threat returning in recent years. It says fear 
is exploited by the Russian propaganda machine. Yeah, and it's also exploited by newspapers like this writing endless stories about how we're all going to expire in a fireball uh, as big as if Tishy suit size leaned too close to the gas hob and caught the oil in his hair alight. You don't need to put all of that product in your hair. You just don't. You just don't. Take it from an expert. It says the revived threat of an attack on the capital has revealed the beyond embarrassing holes in Britain's ability to defend against attacks on the mainland. It's so embarrassing. Were an attack to overwhelm Britain's first line of defence, an attack on London could kill and injure more than a million people, it says. Hospitals and fire services would be destroyed or left powerless as fair fire, no, fire and plague swept through the affected areas, the raising of infrastructure and power lines could leave entire regions unreachable. Which, apart from the, the million dead people, sounds exactly like what most of us have to go through in an average week. Hospitals left powerless, infrastructure collapsing, power outages and regions unreachable due to the bomb crater-like potholes. As experts warn, Britain remains woefully unprepared for an aerial attack. An interactive graphic shows how London would be affected by a nuclear blast. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Warning, warning. Uh, the answer is badly. London would be badly affected by a nuclear blast. And they made it like a game online you can play. See what uh, effect the uh, bombs of various size would have. Fun for all the family. It says, today, a missile launch in Russia can be detected within milliseconds, sending teams of trained experts scrambling to scrutinise and relay the threat to their higher-ups. Unfortunately, their higher-ups will be either hung over from spending the weekend at some Russian oligarch's Italian retreat, or they'll be busy sending pictures of their personal area to some bloke messaging them on Grindr. Disgusting. It will take about 20 minutes, apparently, for a Russian missile to reach Britain or about as long as it takes a 999 operator to uh, answer the phone. Your call is important. <laughs> Thank you for holding. A missile dropped on Westminster would mean the Houses of Parliament and Downing Street being completely obliterated by the thermal blast. So, not all bad news. A direct strike on the centre would see a likely fatal ring of radiation stretching as far as Chelsea. But as no one actually lives in Chelsea, those houses are owned by foreign investment vehicles registered in the Bahamas and were bought with rubles. And I don't know whether that's true or not, but even if it isn't, it doesn't prevent it from being a fact. And then there's a lot of gruesome detail about what will happen to those who are unlucky enough to survive the initial blast, followed by this reassurance. The government says the UK has robust emergency management arrangements in place including the capability to warn and inform the public through a range of channels, including social media platforms, on which they will be able to send us intimate pictures of their personal rockets. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister has been very clear that his publicly funded personal radiation-proof cashmere-lined bomb shelter and swimming pool complex is working perfectly and heated to a comfortable 20 degrees centigrade, while the rest of us will bask in a billion degree heat wave. What a way to end a planet, eh? Dreadful. 0345 6060 Fun with war. Mayfair. Shimu. Oh, hi there. Yes, sir. Yeah, about the portal you were talking. Oh, yeah. yeah there was a news, I think, I'm not sure if it was LBC I heard uh, back in 2004-05. So there was this student... Uh, who was affected by a portal right next to his doorstep. Mm. So after a while complaining why he did, he bought a, f a flower pot a plant yeah. and put it in the puddle. And so people were avoiding it, the flower pot, because they don't hit the pot. Right. So it worked for him and he found the idea. So he was, uh, then he was like uh, looking for portals and uh, putting plants in there, flower plants. And there was a one point he found a quite big one where he could make a small garden, a flower garden. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Are and you then, talking uh, about holes in the road? Yeah. 
Right. And then uh, the local borough, they were quite prompt to fix them. Because he hit the news, uh, like uh, national news, but it right. wasn't like n- nowadays it would be on the Facebook and Instagram. Yes, but Back so, then it wasn't like this. But so he embarrassed them into doing something about it, essentially. Yeah, exactly. Right. So <laughs> there you go. Huh. All you got to do is um, con- uh, spend a ton of money at your local garden centre. <laughs> and then the council might actually do something about filling in the uh, bomb craters in your road. Huh. <laughs> exactly. Excellent news. Good work. Thanks a lot, Shimo. Cheers, mate. 0345 6060973. I did actually, I've got so much um, to talk about and so little time in which to do it. There's about four different stories about how we're being colossally ripped off. Now, I know that those aren't happy stories, but uh, neither was World War III. And we had fun with that. So I might get into that in a minute. Michelle says, you guys crack me up. Who do? I shall never forget last week's show. I stay up every Saturday night to watch. Watch? Thanks so much for your fabulously entertaining show, says Michelle. I don't think Michelle has any idea who she's... uh, I I don't think you're listening to me, Michelle. There ain't nothing to watch on this show. Lee says, "My my stopped clock stopped at 0005. What do I do? Apparently, zeros and fives always lie. In reference to uh, some confusing thing we heard uh, some while ago, which I was trying to forget, and now you've reminded me uh, of it. it. Not not that I complain, you know. Stop whining. (laughs) Uh, Shauna says, I'm changing my name instantly to Fiona by deed poll. Surely I'll get on the ticket. Yeah, any any party you like, Shauna. People are keen to vote for a Fiona. And uh, Isan texts, Thank you, Mr. Producer, for putting me on the air with Mr. Nick Abbott. I believe he is... uh, All the best. Um, And uh, so on. (laughs) I really didn't need to read that. (laughs) It was just a thank you to the bloke through the glass. Why am I reading that? But he appreciates it. Thank you. Um, Ashley says, I'm not even sure I'd trust Sunak with the nuclear codes more than I trusted Bojo, frankly. Um, uh, real life threads by way of Dishy Rishi. Um, I understood the first part, but not the second part. And Adam says, uh, Mayfair pothole only on your show, geez. Does that make sense? No, I don't know. There's something in the air tonight. Get Phil Collins on the phone and he'll explain it to us. Rock and roll! This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Come on, we're running late! We are indeed running late. I don't know how many uh, stories I'll be able to uh, pack into uh, the end of this sh- show, uh, but I have at least two in the palm of my hand. One's on um, the fact that we're being... Well, I don't know about whether it's a fact, but it's unarguable that car insurance has got more expensive. And also, uh, MPs' payoffs. Now, I'm going to save the MPs' payoffs t- <laughs> till last because it will upset you the most. So I'll do car insurance now, and we can build up to the, uh, you know, the main event. How does that sound? UK insurers 
have revealed that the amount they pay, paid out for motor claims went up about 18% last year. But drivers faced premium increases of more than a third. So they paid out less than 20, less than a fifth more in claims, but charged us a third more in insurance uh, uh, premiums. And, as you would expect, the cost of insurance in this country is much higher than the same thing in Europe because, you know, freedom! <coughs> the Association of British Insurers put the average increase for car cover in the UK at 34%. <laughs> wow! The average increase for car cover in the UK from one year to the next, 34%. But many drivers have seen much more than that. Some have, some have suffered a doubling of their previous bill. Electric cars, apparently, are um, among the most expensive. I would have thought that electric cars would be cheaper because they, they ain't got no moving parts. But, you know, 100 years of uh, perfection of the internal combustion engine means that they are fairly reliable. Whereas uh, electric cars are... Well, you know what? Electric cars aren't brand new. One of the most extraordinary uh, pictures I saw, and I, I've mentioned this before, it was, I think it was in the Science Museum, and there's a picture in the Science Museum of uh, New York cab rank in about 1900. And the legend underneath the picture says, in 1900, every cab in New York was electric. What? Yeah. You believe that? And then they just disappeared. And have come back just now, and they're uh, touting it as a brand new uh, invention. Isn't that extraordinary? Over a hundred years ago, in New York, every cab was electric. I didn't know that. Anyway, back to this. The Association of British, British Insurers put the average increase for car cover at 34%. Uh, like I said, many uh, drivers have seen a doubling of their previous bill. So in this country, our car insurance went up by an average of 34%. Guess how much it went up in France? Two <clears> percent. <throat> in this country, it went up by 34 percent. In France, it went up by two percent. Six percent in Italy, five percent in Spain. I mean, we're being taken for a ride in our own cars. In Europe, Germany saw the biggest rises by about 12 percent. 34% here. Um, and Germany uh, saw a larger increase than its European neighbours, but still nowhere near the rises imposed on uh, us poor dopes who pay taxes in this country. And the Association of British Insurers justified the jump in UK premiums by saying vehicle repair costs have jumped uh, and vehicle thefts have jumped and the cost of providing temporary replacement vehicles has jumped, all by about a third. But total payouts for claims only went up by 18%, which rather um, cuts the legs, uh, or takes the legs out of, um, from underneath their argument. They're claiming their costs went up by a third, but they only paid out 18% more. Now, 18% is a smaller number than 34%, which is how much our charges went up by. And what does the watchdog do, by the way? Well, they take their cue from the water industry watchdog and do nothing. The Financial Conduct Authority has so far ruled out an investigation into the market. They said, we are monitoring the motor insurance market closely to ensure that customers are receiving fair value. <laughs> Oh, that's all right then. They're monitoring the situation. Like a person on the dock who's seeing a person drowning just monitors the situation rather than throws them a life belt. We're going down. One insurance company said that in Italy, in Spain and France they saw different degrees of inflation compared with the UK. Any guesses as to why that might be? Anything at all? Um... Begins with a B. Any idea, Bodge? Um... <laughs> Begins with a B. Something about freedom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, 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 where do we... You know, sovereignty. I, I can't comment on that. Can't I, comment I, on I, that. I, 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 blah, 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 blah. 
Okay, here's the story that's uh, really going to upset you. Taxpayers could pay a record £10 million to cover the costs of departing MPs at the general election. They get a golden hello and a golden goodbye. Bye-bye. Official estimates suggest it costs an average of... (laughs) Get ready. Grip onto something firm. £116,000 per MP when they decide to step down. What? £116,000 per MP. The sum covers staff redundancy. The staff, in many cases, being their own wives, husbands, girlfriends, boyfriends, whatever. Or, you know, just somebody they met on Grinder. <laughs> so there's that, plus the cost of closing down an office. I mean, those padlocks don't come cheap, you know. Plus the secure disposal of documents by leaving them on a bus, for instance. And winding up payments to MPs. Oh, I mean, there's a wind up here, but not in the way that was meant. And of course, they made it doubly easy for them to get gone from our lives by doubling the severance payment just lately. They actually doubled the reward they get for failing to win. It's okay, you can go ahead and scream now. I mean, if, if that's going to help, just let it out. They doubled the amount of severance payment to more than £19,000 each. And that means that MPs will be paid for four months instead of two while they close their office. I mean, I would imagine that many of them have to actually find out where their office is before they can close it. And they have to manage the departure of staff and run around in a blind panic trying to get a TV job or a newspaper column and ringing up all the people they did favours for while they were in office to cash in their chips, assuming that those people will still take their calls. All of MPs are eligible for the payment if they stand down at a general election. And so many of them are doing that bravely running away before we can tell them what we think of them. I've, I've lost count with the, uh, the current um, uh, figure, but uh, as of uh, about a week ago, 63 Tories have already said that they don't plan on defending their seats in an election. And uh, let's assume that it's going to be 100 as a nice round number assuming that we're allowed to have another election and it isn't cancelled for our safety by... This government. Yeah. I mean, would you bet on that not happening? This election hasn't even been given a date yet and they're already too timid to see what the electorate really thinks of them. So they're bravely running away. (laughs) It's priceless, ain't it? Actually, it's not priceless. It's costing us £10 million. Damn it! This week, two senior Tories who were standing down in the election, James Heapy and Robert Halfen, quit their ministerial posts. And I don't know what you're thinking. You're thinking, not James Heapy and Robert Halfen. What will we do without their, um, you know, all the things they did for us, like, uh, I've got nothing. I've got nothing, and neither do you. And Theresa May will leave Parliament after 27 years and will totter out on those heels that she can't walk in. And Brandon Lewis will go. Oh, no. Yeah, I know. How upsetting. Graham Brady, the chair of the 1922 Committee of Harumphing Old Geezers, is off. Ex-sports minister Tracy Crouch is going. Previous defence secretary Ben Wallace... Former secretaries Sajid Javid and Dominic Raab. My name is Dominic Raab and I'm a Tory. I don't support the Human Rights Act and I don't believe in economic and social rights. My name is Dominic Raab and I'm a Tory. I totally believed you the first time. And the total cost to taxpayers for managing the cost 
of departing MPs was revealed in a meeting of the Speaker's Committee for the Independent Parliamentary Standards Authority. And it's independent in the way that it gives MPs exactly what they would have given themselves. So not in the sense that you or I would understand the word independent. And the Labour frontbencher Lucy Powell said that the Independent Parliamentary Standards Authority had estimated costs of managing the departure of one MP at £116,000 when you take all those things into account, she said. And that list is already at 100, so that's 10 million quid just to start off. And the IPSA chair, Richard Lloyd, said many MPs, having already declared that they are standing down, has been helpful to us in our planning. Well, that's nice, isn't it? But what about us poor dopes who pay taxes and don't get £116,000 when we quit our jobs or are thrown out for being useless? What about us? There you are, you see? I saved the uh, annoying part till last. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, if you missed any of uh, tonight's show, then the good news is you can catch up anytime you like on Global Player. It's the official LBC app with which you can pause and rewind live radio. We put the Friday and Saturday night shows up the internet, exclusive to Global Player. We put them as uh, podcasts. It's the best way to listen to them, unless you want to listen live. We take the news and the ads out takes less time to listen to, you'll use less electricity, and with the money you save, you'll be able to throw some spare change at a departing MP. I'll be back Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10... Well, tonight, in fact, it being Sunday. Tonight at 10 o'clock. Coming up at 4 on LBC, it's Henry Riley. But first, Clyde Ball. Nick, thank you. And after the news, big tech company... 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 News, big tech company...